Stadium, 60,500 here. Florida State leads this series five games to two. The last meeting was in 1989. And the tradition at Dope Campbell Stadium, Chief Osceola. And the gauntlet, the spear. And the challenge has been cast to LSU. Florida State won the toss. They will defer to the second half. LSU will receive. You see number 33 on the left, Odell Beckham. Number two on the right is Slip Watkins. Watkins with the blazing speed for LSU. Richie Andrews, senior number nine with the kickoff, the left footer. It's going to come down to Beckham very high at the 12. Beckham loses the ball. FSU has it at the 16-yard line. Terrell. Luckily, number 27 came up with it for Florida State as Beckham dropped it at the 16-yard line. So Florida State takes over deep in LSU territory, and here is Casey Weldon, who's the junior from Tallahassee. 20 of 30 passing the ball for 244 yards last week in the 20-17 loss to Auburn. He looked good in that ball game. Well, that got this crowd on their feet early here at Dope Campbell. Camp lead. And Edgar Bennett in the backfield for Florida State. Dawson and Mosley. Here is Amp Lee. Inside the 10 and out of bounds. Inside the 9. And Tim Foley, let's look at that kickoff return by Odell Beckham again. The special teams have been a thorn in the side for the LSU Tigers. The ball pops out. Beckham, a freshman, has to realize the severity of that error. And that's just not what LSU needed to get this thing started on the right foot, obviously. This will be second down three, FSU. The ball just inside the nine-yard line. E.C. Weldon with Ampley and Bennett in the backfield. Ampley follows the blocking on the right side. Big hole, touchdown, Florida State. Rushing touchdown of the year. And Mike Archer looking at the wrong end of a six to nothing score with less than a minute gone in the first quarter. Well, Reggie Johnson, the tight end for Florida State, had done an excellent job blocking for Lee on the play before. And that time you saw Kevin Mancini walling off LSU defenders as Ampley romped into the end zone. The end his point after is good it is seven to nothing with only 14 43 remaining in the first quarter just a few seconds have gone by and mike archer said last year L florida state had lost two when they played lsu and were desperate for a win and the same has happened this year you see dossie in motion here is going to come down field wall off here and and watch the block hang on a second watch the block of mancini here watch him clear the way for Amply pulling out around. You see Robert Stevenson, number uh, 52, number 29, Dossie fighting to get in the way of those Tiger defenders. Excellent block by Stevenson. Mancini coming around the corner here. Look at that big guy. Walling him off. Protects Amply. Escorts him right into the end zone. Well, now Mike Archer will just see the whole thing happen all over again. FSU had won the toss, deferred their decision of the second half, kicked it off, Beckham fumbled, now the touchdown, and they're going to kick it and start it all over again. Only difference is Mike Archer is now down 7 to nothing here at Doak Campbell Stadium. Beckham and Watkins back there again. You know, that can work against you, Bob. You get your team real up for a football game, and, uh, and something like that happens. It breaks early. Sometimes uh, the team that scores the touchdown loses their concentration, begins to think it's going to be a walk, and uh, it wakes up the, uh, the other team. Here comes Slip Watkins this time. Let's see if he does any better. Down hard at the 21-yard line. First man down, number 44, John White. 18-yard kickoff return, and Chad Luke now will get an opportunity to put this LSU team on the offensive move. He's a redshirt freshman from Baton Rouge. Chad Luke has only three interceptions, one interception, three TDs, 48 of 82. Mike Archer put uh, 22 kids on the field for the first time in their opener against Georgia. Bobby Bowden replacing 14 starters. Uh, 
neither team has a lot of experience. Harvey Williams is 22. He's the tailback. SEC back of the week. 213 yards against Kentucky last week. There's Harvey Williams. You see he's a good runner. Out to the 29-yard line. Tackled by 45 Kirk Carruthers. And a penalty marker is on the play. The LSU offensive line has some players moving around up there. As Tim will keep you posted with that as we go through the game. The defensive line a little suspect for Florida State. They're playing with injuries. Troy Sanders, James Cheney, and Henry Ostasuski are the starters for Florida State up front. And they're all nicked a little bit, Bob. Henry Ostasuski with a sore shoulder. Cheney has the same problem. Holding Florida State. He penalized from the end of the run. First down. You know, you might ask, how can that be? How's a defense hold? Oftentimes, a defensive lineman will step across and grab a guard or a tackle that's trying to pull. That time, tackle trying to get out of there. I'm not sure if that's exactly what happened on that play, but the flag came down early and it was in the interior. They move it out just inside the 35-yard line now, getting a little better field position for LSU. Already trailing seven to nothing in the ball game after the fumbled kickoff, and Florida State scored with Ampli carrying into the end zone. Harvey Williams again more yardage out to the 41 and a half yard line and let's take a look at our diehard key matchup of this ball game. Well, Harvey Williams and he's the guy that can do it all for LSU 700 yards as a freshman 1000 yards as a sophomore and then got nailed by some a knee injury and then groin injuries but uh, came out at the latter part of last year and he's going to be operating against this young man a freshman true freshman Marvin Jones brother of Fred Jones former star here of the Seminoles and he leads this defensive ta in tackles as a true freshman. On second down three, Chad Luke throwing it out of the flat. It goes incomplete at about the 46-yard line. Over on the far side of the field. Intended for number 29, Sammy Seamster. Loop, as we told you, 6'2", 207, is a red shirt freshman quarterback. Yeah, Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator here at Florida State, has really pulled this defense together. A lot of young, inexperienced players, and uh, Miami just shoved the ball down to throw it. There's no other way to say it. They were preventing the pass, and Miami ran the ball on them. But they really came up with an admirable effort in a tough place to play at Auburn last week. Third down and three for LSU out at the 41-yard line. Harvey Williams tries to get it on the right side. He does, and more. Inside Seminole territory, out of bounds at the 46 of Florida State. Leon Fowler, number three, making the stop for the Seminoles, a gain of 12. And Harvey is just one of those smooth gliders. Watch him go. Andy Martin and Raymond Smoot clearing some people out of the way. Another fine block by Sammy Seamster, and here he goes. He can make you miss, and he can go a long way. There's no question about it that this young man has matured over the years and is going to be a top draft choice by the NFL one day. First down 10 at the 46-yard line of Florida State. Chad Luke has Williams and Seamster in the backfield. Two receivers left, one to the right. Williams again, nice lateral move. Gets inside the 45 to the 41-yard line. Troy Sanders makes the stop for Florida State. One thing that's a little bit different early on here, Bob, in watching the films, most of the time when LSU was in a one-back set, they were throwing the football. That's the second time now, early in the game, one-back set, run with Williams. Trying to throw the defense off a little bit. Trying to confuse their keys that they may have established in their minds. Second down four from the 41. Williams hit in the backfield. Spins free. Drives close to the first down yard. It's near the 36-yard line. Harvey Williams, number 22. He's a senior from Hempstead, Texas. He's had some personal problems. The coach has supported him very well. And Mike Archer told me yesterday he believes that this young man is ready to play and get his head into football because he has a great future ahead of him. Good pressure right up the gut. A lot of backs would have been down for a three-yard loss. And here he goes. Gets a first down, clock running. Those are the statistics coming into the day. Third place in the league in terms of yards gain for Harvey Williams going to be third down very close to the first down and his career has been dotted with injuries Bob it's just uh, even this year that's uh, third in the league but uh, he we saw him miss most of the Vanderbilt game and that's not the only action that he's missed, missed this year he got a hamstring in that ball game. 
This is third down less than a yard. FSU leading 7-0. LSU on the drive. We'll go to Williams again. He may have got it on the second effort. Howard Deacons, 89, the first man to hit him for Florida State. Let's see where the spot will be. My mistake, I thought he had it the last time. Good job by the nose guard that time. Henry Ostazewski moved him inside. It got kind of stood up. Blake Miller, who is an excellent lineman, and wasn't a lot of room there. Harvey slithers, slithers through for a yard. And hasn't made Mike Archer smile yet. This kind of a drive is the kind of drive he's looking for. Started at the LSU 20-yard line. Remember, Florida State out in front, seven to nothing. There's a fake play, snapped straight back to Harvey Williams, and he's knocked down hard at the 30-yard line. You saw Chad Loop walk over like he's calling a an audible to his to his end on the left side. They simply snapped it, but FSU was ready. <laughs> That's, that plays probably in honor of Bobby Bowden. You know, whenever a football team is preparing to play Florida State, you know, you know you're going to run into some gimmick plays. It's just going to happen. So, so LSU not to be outdone. Ed Zombrecker and Mike Archer came up with one of their own. Second down five from the 30-yard line. Like the old uh, single wing snapping it back to the tailback. Williams stopped this time at about the 28-yard line. He's hit by Howard Dinkins again. Dinkins playing well at the right outside linebacker position. He's a junior from Jacksonville for the Seminoles. You may see more running than usually for LSU today, Bob, because of the injury to Kitchen. He's uh, got a separated cartilage in his rib. And that's not real medical, but the idea is that his side hurts and uh, may just slow him down a little bit. So Williams may take a little bit more of the more the load. Already eight carries for Williams. This is third down two. Nine carries for Williams. Hit in the backfield. Avoids one tackle. Does not get it this time. Down he goes at the 30. Excellent pursuit by the Seminoles. Troy Sanders will get credit for the first hit. Well, this time FSU bringing their, bringing their strong safe. You see Bill Reagan's coming up field. Nobody blocks him and watch this. A little slop to the inside, to the inside, and then pops it back out. Great pursuit by FSU. Finally, Marvin Jones gets there to put him away, but Williams was off to the races if uh, Jones hadn't got there. Here's a field goal attempt from Pedro Suarez, a sophomore from Hialeah, Florida. And it's going to be about 46 yards. It's a fake. It's a fake around the right side. Close to the first down. Let's see where they spot it. The official is saying the first down was achieved. Jesse Daigle, backup quarterback, took the snap and ride, ran to the 25-yard line. Well, Jesse Daigle, is, uh, his dad's one of the coaches here at LSU, a quarterback, and he was in the, the hunt for the, for the backup position early on in the season, but now his uh, chores are holder for the extra point field goals and great effort by the quarterback to get that ball across the first uh, down marker. Here to go, Jess. Well, there's two of Florida State's own medicine. Two plays being thrown right in their face early on. <laughs> the fake field goal gets the first down. Harvey Williams left side drives inside the 20 to the 18 yard line. 10 carries in this game already for Harvey Williams with 9.24 to go in the first quarter. Well, one of the things that Harvey Re Willi Williams realizes is that he has to show his durability. Uh, no NFL team is going to draft a running back if they think that he is uh, fragile. And so they're going to give him the ball a lot, and uh, he certainly has the ability to carry the, the load. Second down, four at the 19. This time they hand it to Seamster. He has stood up at the line of scrimmage, hit by Kirk Carruthers, 45, the inside linebacker. By the way, Harvey Williams now has moved into third place on the all-time LSU rushing list behind only Charles Alexander and Dalton Hilliard. He passed Terry Robisky, who's offensive coordinator, president of the LA Raiders. There's Jesse's dad right there in the sunglasses. That's Jesse Daigle. His son just ran for first down on that fake field goal. I know Pop is proud. This is third down three. Loop to the air. Intended for Seamster, incomplete. Now that'll bring up another field goal opportunity. 
this time we'll probably actually see him attempt the field goal, Pedro Suarez. I think Mickey Andrews had about three guys on Todd Kinchin there. And uh, Sammy Seamster just drifted off into the flat. He was uncovered, gone unnoticed, blocked for a second. The guy whose primary responsibility he was just kind of let him go. And ball just a little high for him to make the catch. This kick is up, a 35-yard attempt. It is good, and we have a 7-3 ball game here at Goat Campbell Stadium with 8 11 remaining in the first quarter from Tallahassee. Kickoff, and then the run into the end zone by Amp Lee. LSU drives from their 20 for the 35-yard field goal from Pedro Suarez. Eric Terrell and Shannon Baker, a couple of youngsters, are back deep for LSU. Terrell is seven. Baker is number one. Suarez will kick off for LSU. Into the wind. He's going to hold it up a little bit. In fact, he'll drive it out of bounds. That'll be a five-yard penalty. So the LSU drive stalled, and they had to get the 35-yard field goal as they go back to kick this thing over again. But other than that, an effective run, uh, run-oriented drive, keeping it primarily in the hands of Harvey Williams. And that's what Mike Archer, Archer wants. He wants to use up the clock as he controls the football and get points on the board at the end of it. Uh, you always want seven points as a coach, but you want something. You maintain possession of the football for six minutes like that. You want to put some points on the board. They'll back it up to the 30 yard line. There's Bobby Bowden going for victory number 200 today. 60 years old, 60 years young. He's <laughs> plays golf like a 19 year he old. Never <laughs> be considered Funky. an old person. No, uh -uh. Got a great, uh, great sense of humor, great perspective on this game, and still having fun. You can still see the emotion in him. He still enjoys what he's doing, and as soon as he does, he just hang him up. Down to Terrell at the four-yard line. Not much else. Good coverage by LSU as he stopped just outside the 20. And now let's have a look at the diehard key matchup for Florida State. But Lawrence Dossey, with the exception of Harvey Williams, maybe the most talented player on the field. Both those guys are just an excessive ability. It's just not, you know, you look at a kid like that and say, this is not fair. And then he's going to be going against Ray Adams, a cornerback. Of course, they'll be switching sides, and Corey Raymond's going to be playing in there for LSU. But FSU is going to try to get the ball to Dossey, and he can make things happen in a hurry. Dossey, 41 catches, two touchdown receptions. Dropped a big one on the five-yard line that would have put FSU in front of Auburn late in the ballgame last week. Weldon completes his first pass attempt of the day out to the 33-yard line to Shannon Baker, the sophomore from Lakeland. Covering on the play, Corey Raymond, gain of 12. Baker's got the great speed. Corey Raymond knows that, and he's got to be concerned about him running by. Gives him a little bit too much room. Now makes a nice break back on the ball. But Shannon Baker comes up with the catch. That's his 14th catch of the year. And he's a good counter punch to Dossie. That's the speed man right there. Edgar Bennett amply in the backfield. Here comes Dossie in motion. Short side to open side. And off to Ampli looking for room, finding very little. Maybe a yard out to the 35. Anthony Williams, the left inside linebacker with a stop for LSU. Talk to John Mitchell, the defensive coordinator for LSU, and they're going to try to give this uh, Seminole team some different looks. That they've really concentrated on getting the ball to the backs and pass patterns. And I know Bob has talked, Bob Bowden has talked a lot about trying to get it down the field, but you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure they believe that at LSU. Second down nine. Golden completes it to the tight end Johnson, driving hard out near the 42-yard line. Reggie Johnson, 6'2", 252 pounds with that reception. He's been having trouble holding on to the ball, but Bobby Bowden says if he can really learn to catch well, he's got a great pro future. He's a senior. Because I was talking to some of the graduate assistants. I was in there looking at tape, and, uh, and they said he was probably the best blocker they had against the run. So this guy can really blow people off the ball, and uh, if he develops some hands, you're right, Bob. I mean, he'll be a valuable asset. 
Johnson and Dave Robertson are tied in now for this third down three. Ampley tries the left side. Spins forward close to the first down. May not have gotten it. Going to be very close. We talked about Mark Boutte being a defensive problem for Florida State. He's number 95. Number 95. Let's watch him work. Number 45, Mike Hewitt. Boutte taking the inside gap, fighting upfield. Hewitt trying to lose. Dave Roberts. Roberts doing a good job on him. Mark Boutte started out by backing up Carl Dunbar and Clint James as a freshman and then went to start at the nose once Daryl Phillips graduated. Now they needed him back at tackle and they're building that defensive front around him. Pete Jenkins feels like he's going to be another one of another one of his boys in the pros. You see how short the distance will be for Florida <laughs> State. Less than the length of the ball. Of course everybody here wants him to go for it. It's out here at the 43 and a half yard line. Yeah, I'm not sure that Bobby Bowden ever needed to be encouraged <laughs> to go for it. What, what do you think? I think he was going for it all along. Right. I mean, he's the kind of guy who plays blackjack, and he, he's the kind of guy that hits 19. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a tough situation. This ball is just outside the Florida State 43-yard line. It's gut check time early for the Seminoles. Handed off to Bennett. He gets the first down on the right side. Edgar Bennett tackled by John Morgan. First down Seminoles. And Edgar Bennett some kind times gets lost as the spotlight hits Amp Lee. Right side of that line blows out there. John Morgan, number 90, fights his way through and almost grabs him in time. But Bennett squeezes loose. Edgar, good quickness, good pass catching ability. And an excellent blocker for Dexter Carter last year and Ampley this year. Just outside the 46, Casey Weldon, deep drop. Throws it just as he's hit. I mean, he is leveled by Ru uh, Ruval Rose Swan. Came back <laughs> there and just knocked him down hard, number 35. That's Ravel Rose. Ravel Rose Swan. <laughs> I would practice that all morning. <laughs> R O O V E L R O E. I'll just spell I'm it. I'm still working on Ostazuski. Okay, now watch this. Here comes Ravelro. And, and uh, Ravelro is uh, heralded as the most Ooh. valuable newcomer in the SEC. They expected big things from him. And <laughs> if, if uh, he keeps doing that, I know one guy that's going to remember him pretty well. This will be second down 10. Weldon got rid of the ball just before he got Almost picked off at the line of scrimmage. Scott Wharton, the nose guard, almost pulled that down out of the air. But it goes incomplete and will bring up third down 10. Well, that time, John Mitchell getting a little bit, the coordinator at LSU getting a little closer coverage here. You know, LSU is known for zone defense, and good job by Scott Wharton getting his hands up and knocking that ball down. But you remember, they're going to throw it down the field. You remember that part? Well, they haven't done it yet. I know they will before the afternoon's over, but LSU taking that away early. See if they try to go to Dossie on third down 10. The play fake, the sprint out. Weldon going on the run to Dossie. First down. That wasn't tough to predict. 42 catches on the year for Lawrence Dossie. Now that's something Weldon can do, and that's he sprint out pretty quickly. Now secondary coach at LSU is a young guy named Joey Wessel, and I know he's talked to his players about this, but Tell the quarterback, the quarterback's rolling out, talk to him, he can work outside. But, you know, nobody said anything to Williams and he gets hung up inside and, and Weldon had, had uh, narrowed the distance down and just laid it right in there to Dossie. Dossie Big time now. player, Bob. 28 straight games with at least one catch. First down at the 39 yard line of LSU. That's Dossie in motion. Here's Ampley running to the right side. Couple or three yards, not much more, stop there. Uh, FSU leads seven to three in this game with 5:43 to go. First quarter from Tallahassee. Communication is so important in a secondary, and that's why uh, as soon as the ball snap, you know, safety should be talking to the cornerbacks and giving them some uh, giving them some feedback, especially if they're in bump and run like Wayne Williams was there. He has no vision on the quarterback, no vision on the action of the ball, and uh, if someone would talk to him, he, they can get him moving in the right direction. Second down eight from the 37-yard line. Capacity crowd, 60,500. 
at Doak Campbell Stadium. They're expecting to expand this stadium up to around 75,000 by 1994. May expand some next year. Weldon once again hit as he throws it. Good penetration. This time, Mark Boutte. 95 is back there. Third down eight at the 37 yard line. Excellent penetration as Boutte came in from the defensive right side to hit Weldon. And Weldon's been roughed up here early in this ballgame. 11th play of the drive for Florida State. Third down eight. Five defensive backs. They've got Swan down coming on the top, Bob. Weldon has the protection this time. Can't find anybody. It is complete to Edgar Bennett, but only to the 35-yard line, short of the first down. That's where the Florida State drive is going to stall. And they say incomplete now. He didn't hold on to it. Good job by Swan that time, too. He's fighting upfield on a pass rush. He saw that back trying to slip out and just gave him a shot and knocked him off enough that Weldon couldn't get it to him. Weldon, Weldon setting. See Stevenson, 52, blocking there Mike Morris, number 60. Swan late coming in there because he grabbed that back and finally they find somebody off in the corner but Bennett can't hold on. Well now it looks to me as though that pass was complete. There's a disagreement with the officials out here as to whether or not the pass was complete. Looked to me as though Bennett caught it. The catch was good. It'll be third down at the spot. They resolve the difference and the catch is, in, uh, is complete. You must have seen a replay here Bob. And they rule it a catch it. Yep. It's still fourth down, however, at the 35 yard line. It'll be fourth down six. <laughs> fourth and six. Not this time. Not well, this time. But They're... you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. That's the exciting thing about Seminole football. You never know when something exciting is about to occur. Now, this is the kind of place, as they're late getting players onto the field, the kind of place where you could pull some trickery here. Scotty McLaren, the boot punter, is in there. He'll try to drop it down inside the 10. Good punt. Let's see if it checks up. It's caught on the fly by FSU at the seven-yard line. A heck of a job. The man with the ball, David Stallworth. And a good punt by Scotty McLaren, number 90. Seven to three with 4.13 to go in the first quarter. FSU, uh, LSU will have it at their own seven-yard line. Tomorrow night, a grudge match of coaches on TNT Sunday Nitro. Sam Weich's Bengals meet Jerry Glanville's Falcons in Atlanta. Remember their hoorah last year when uh, Glanville was down at Houston. Stadium show against at 7.30. Skip Carey, Pat Hayden will have the kickoff at 8 o'clock on TNT tomorrow night from Atlanta. Darrell Williams, Calvin Wyndham now in the backfield for LSU. They get it to Wyndham. He drives to about the nine yard line and not much more. There's the noise meter at Hill Campbell Stadium. Not a heck of a lot of noise early in this ball game, but if it stays close, you can bet it'll build. And this is a time as a defensive back, you're always thinking about the deep one. You're thinking about the 90 yarder. You're going to give him the short stuff. Don't worry about it. Just don't let him throw it over your head. Second down, single setback. They give it on the delay to Darrell Williams, Harvey's brother. He gets out to the 13-yard line. Against Texas A&M, first time both of them started together, Darrell and Harvey Williams. We'll talk about brothers. We've got the McCorvey brothers in the action here. Ethan Arrow and Darrell, two defensive backs, one for FSU, one for LSU. Third down five from the 13. Crowd now starting to make some noise. You're looking at Arrow McCorvey there at FSU in the secondary. Luke with some time, dumps it off to his fullback, Darrell Williams, and Williams gets the first down out across the 20 yard line. Eight yard gain. That was a significant possession for LSU as they started this on their seven yard line. No question about it. And uh, Kenny Farrow and John Henry's got to be proud of their line. Look at the job. You have to have time to throw this pass. You're trying to get the linebackers out of there, let them get depth, and then just dump it to the fullback. Low risk. But it got him a first down that, as you mentioned, Bob, really important in terms of field position. 
from the 21 yard line now Florida State leading seven to three with 234 to go first quarter loop on the rollout under pressure ball is loose Anthony Moss knocked it out of there number 99 it's going to remain remain in the possession of LSU however Calvin Wyndham fell on number three I think that's the time when you call look out. <laughs> Anthony Moss and Howard Dinkins coming from the outside. When those guys get around the corners, there's something. A scramble for the football. Wyndham finally got it. Sanders in there. That's somebody's child. It's not exactly. There's a 50 year senior, perhaps. <laughs> Here's the handoff in the backfield. The window out to the 23 yard line on the second down of 10. Doesn't that do something to your skin to paint it up like that? I suppose not. They paint them from coast to coast on college campuses. It goes a lot lower than that, right? <laughs> They're all having fun, having a good time. You know, they look forward to Saturday here in Seminole land or whether it's down in Death Valley in Louisiana. They all have a good time. College football's in town. Third and seven from the 24. Out of the shotgun. Here's the tremendous pressure on Chad Loop. The ball is loose. They're in the end zone. They're spotting it down. It will not be a touchdown. Carruthers had it. He was the man who applied the pressure. Along with Bill Reagans. But they'll mark the ball dead on the fumble at the seven. Chad Loop trying to make something happen, but you have to be able to take your losses. Reagan's coming clean. Nobody touched him. Crothers clean from the other side. That's the time to either unload the ball out of the, to the sidelines or just wrap it up and protect it. I think he had tried. He tried to make it look like he was throwing it, but I, you know, the official didn't buy it. And so FSU now has the ball, puts the uh, Tiger defense in another bind. Carl Simpson, 95, the Seminole who ran it into the end zone, and now they have it first and goal at the seven, leading seven to three with a minute to go, first quarter. And off Bennett, he does not get to the five-yard line. You play tough defense, you try to put some things together, and all of a sudden they throw you into the game a second time at the five-yard line. And this is where you need some seniors. This is where you need some, you know, old rough guys that haven't shaved for a couple of days, you know, to get in there and, and whack some heads around and get those young kids fired up. Get them believing that they can make something happen here. They can take it right back away from them. Of course, Bobby Bowden's trying to stick it in the end zone. Two turnovers for LSU. First one led to a Florida State touchdown. Can't believe it's on the right side where he scored last time. He waltzes into the end zone. Ampley's second touchdown of the day. Both of them coming after LSU tur uh, turnovers inside the 10. There's only 16 seconds remaining. Great block by Edgar Bennett. That fullback, you know, the guy that makes it happen. As we mentioned for Dexter Carter last year and for Ampley. Good run by Ampley, but this was just a matter of finding the white grass. Two first quarter touchdowns for Florida State University following LSU turnovers inside the 10. And we have a 14 to 3 Florida State lead. And LSU turnover inside the 10. And once again, Amp Lee took it in off the right side. Let's watch how this happens on the right side. You know, the right side of the line, just an excellent job. But right here, right there, Reggie Johnson, watch the block that he gets on the, the linebacker. And watch Edgar Bennett here take down the defensive back as this play develops. Good job. Good contact by Johnson. Now he gets the turn. Haynes leading it up inside. But Bennett chops down a defensive back and touchdown Amp Lee. And ready for the kickoff again. We have Odell Beckham and Slip Watkins back deep. Number two Watkins on the left. Beckham up over the right side of your screen. Beckham the man who fumbled the opening kickoff of the game. Off the foot of Richie Andrews that Florida State took in for their first touchdown. 16 seconds in the first quarter. And 
Packers drives this ball into the stands. Touch them all. <laughs> oh, my. I'll bring it out to the 20. Nothing ticks off the clock, and LSU will have one opportunity for a play here in this quarter. expect a backup quarterback to come in on the second or third series and here comes Saul Graves in in place of Chad Luke Graves the senior fifth year senior had been the starter Chad Luke replaced him it's part of the Mike Archer system to give the starting quarterback a series off after the second or third series of the game in order to watch see what's happening and give the other player a chance to work with the offense pitch to Williams Florida State is there Williams is going to be thrown for a loss at the 17, Reagans, the first man back, the senior strong safety for Florida State, number 15. The Seminoles certainly come after the run. There's no question about that. They're attacking. They're attacking the run. And we'll talk more about that when we come back. That's the end of the first quarter. 14-3, Florida State. Campbell Stadium on the campus of Florida State University in Tallahassee where uh, where my buddy here can't get his, his microphone stretched all the way over but that's what it is on the road in Tallahassee 14 to 3 FSU up in front here this is and what Mike uh, Archer feels like right now <laughs> no kidding yeah, the too early turn down. turnovers and uh, you know they're down 14 to 3 <laughs> you look pretty good that way well we just like to share everything with you on our TBS broadcast it's kind of a it's kind of a family affair here so we'll get back to the action on the opening play of the second quarter as we uh, make our way back over to our view. We've also spilled coffee in our booths. It's uh, quite a disaster area up here. <laughs> Somebody's placing a call to the Florida governor right now. It's second down 12 from the 18-yard line for Florida State, uh, for LSU, with the Seminoles leading the ball game by a score of 14 to 3. Saul Graves tries to set up the screen on the left side. He tossed it out to Seamster, but he dropped it at about the 13-yard line. The statistics in the first quarter. You see that LSU actually has a little bit better edge in the statistics in most categories, but the big one, two turnovers, both inside the 10, both of which Florida State turned into touchdowns. I've been doing additions over here. <laughs> <laughs> Clean up that coffee. Really? Now the crowd's starting to get into this defensively as it's third down 12 for LSU. Here they come. Graves gets rid of it as he's hit. Missed everybody. They got pass interference on Terrell Buckley down here on Todd Kitchen, Bob. Down about the 32-yard line. Yep. Terrell's 27. Keith Jones is the pressure guy 46 for FSU 27 Terrell Buckley very aggressive player he settles Kinchin trying to trying to go by him oh. and the reason, interference Florida State first down the reason that was called Bob is because the ball was in the air Terrell Buckley is so confident he has it he can sit down you see him sit down and stop and just totally disregard any deep pattern because he knows he can get in front get in front of uh, of the receiver and knock him off and Mickey Andrews just talking to Bobby Bowden about the call but the ball happened to be in the air when Buckley hits him the balls in the air pass interference Mickey Andrews defensive coordinator here at Florida State since 1984 well, spotted at the 32-yard line where it's first down LSU. Florida State leading 14-3. Graves hands to Williams. Oh, he is slippery, but he doesn't get much this time. Reagans will get credit for the stop over there. And let's go to our studio in Atlanta now, Ron Thule. All right, thank you very much, Bob Neal. Number 15, Houston playing host to Arkansas in the Astrodome. Arkansas quarterback Kent, Kent Quinn Grovey picked off by former Oklahoma Sooner Jerry Parks. He returns it 26 yards down the left sideline for a touchdown. About nine minutes left in the first quarter. Houston on top, 7-0. Let's go back to Bob and Tim. Some people wondering if this will be Houston's week to become number one in the country. Everybody who gets to be number one seems to lose. We'll keep you up to date on all the scores all day long. 
Graves with a play fake wants to throw. He's hit as he throws. Great grab by number 49, Todd Ketchum. He's the big playmaker, and he's out near midfield. They'll spot him down at the 48-yard line. Penalty marker is also down in the LSU backfield, and we're going to get a holding call against the Bengal Tigers. Nullifying a beautiful effort by Saul Graves and by Todd Kinchin. Saul Graves really hung in there. I think they might have picked up Ray Smoot on this one, but Saul Graves hung in the pocket. Holding. LSU. Replay second down. He showed a lot of courage standing in there, and Kitchen shows a lot of courage going over the middle for the ball. Slides around the jam, finds a soft spot in the zone. Great placement by Graves, and Kitchen goes up for him. Look at this athletic ability. Now, he played basketball at LSU for part of 87, 88. Six feet, 192 pounds, and a tough player. Mike Archer said that he, he combined some of the skills of Tony Moss for Wendell Davis. He's got some of the moves of the other, some of the hands of the other, and he, he likes him. Thinks he's one of the finer receivers in LSU history. They've had some great ones. Yep. Jerry Sullivan said the same thing. The wide receiver coach who coached all those guys said he's just really is something special. Second down 19 LSU after the holding call. Saul Graves, the fifth year senior at quarterback. He unloads it to Seamster, makes a one-handed catch, but he only gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Errol McCorvey with the stop, number 26 for the Seminoles. Some scores from action around the country. Miami leading Texas Tech. Georgia Tech out in front of Duke after tying North Carolina last week. We'll keep you posted all afternoon. Of course, Florida State fans will start being interested in the ACC scores. Michigan right. State leads Purdue. You're kidding. Three to nothing. I know that's a shocker. Mike Archer hired by Joe Dean in December 1986. 10, 1 and 1 in his first year. They gave the LSU Tigers a gain of one on the play. So it'll be third and 18 from the 24. Good protection for Graves. He has to dump it off to Williams, who just draws a host of tacklers from FSU. Kirk Carruthers in on the play. He's had seven tackles in this game already today. Number 45, the inside linebacker. And LSU can't move it. They'll have to punt it away. Good coverage by the FSU secondary linebackers, defensive backs working together. Good coordination. Graves had all the time in the world provided by the Tiger line. Nobody was open. Finally just dumped it. Terrell Buckley is back to take the Brian Griffith punt. Terrell Buckley with a sore ankle. But he's got two punt returns for touchdowns already this year. They almost blocked that one. Got their hands on it. Florida State hadn't got to a punt in a long time, and they did this time. They'll knock it dead at the 47-yard line. It's only a 22-yard punt. Bill Reagan got back there to get his hand on it. Reagan's has had quite a game so far from his strong safety spot, special teams. Florida State leading 14 to 3 and they'll take over the ball with good field position at the 47 and a half yard line of LSU after Bill Reagan's got his hands on this punt and they work on this extremely hard here at Florida State it's always been something they pride themselves on a great angle by Reagan's too. knocks it up in the air let's see it again trying to get it off against Florida State you got to get rid of it in a hurry because they are coming you know they've got a plan to get it. And Brad Johnson is going to be quarterbacking Florida State now as Sean Jackson's in at tailback. He's the true freshman from New Orleans. He's a big, good runner. Watch him, number 37, who Paul Moore's the fullback, the 250-pounder. This is Sean Jackson. Jackson reminds you a little bit of Sammy Smith from Florida State, about the same size, 6'2 and 220. There's Brad, just came into the game in place of Casey Weldon. Weldon came in in place of Brad last week against Auburn. We haven't heard anything that Casey Weldon is injured. Casey Weldon's been hit several times in this ball game. Well, I think you want to try to keep both quarterbacks in the game. You want to keep them both around the action. Let them know that they're both going to play. Looks like Casey Weldon is okay. He is down the side. Second down one. John Jackson. 
Penalty markers fly. Jackson got enough for the first down, I believe. Well, that time, you know, if you see Mike Archer, he's hot. Uh, you know, the play before, it looked like there was some uh, hole in Ravel. <laughs> Swan was trying to get away from the tight end, and, and uh, <laughs> there was a little entrapment going on over there, and uh, Archer brought it up, and, and what he's yelling about is that the guy that's supposed to make the call didn't make the call. The call came from the, from the uh, official in the secondary. Florida State, replay second down. And so Mike is uh, asking that other young gentleman <laughs> why he is letting his responsibility be uh, usurped by someone else <laughs> in, in those terms. Florida State's had penalty problems the last couple of games. Uh, Bobby Bowden said the single biggest problem in the Auburn game were the particularly late in the game penalties against FSU. This will be second down to 11. They move it back to the 48 yard line. Here's the handoff to Paul Moore, the big fullback. He doesn't really have the outside speed, as you see. And he stopped up here at about the 46 yard line. You know, we talk about the special teams and the effect that it can have on a football game and how it can either be extremely damaging or beneficial and that man right there Bobby Bowden pays special attention to this and and I think Wally Burnham is the guy that's actually in charge of the punt block they divide it up into punt coverage and they give different responsibilities to different people I think Wally Burnham is the guy that's been doing the punt block part Third down nine from the 46. Five defensive backs in for LSU. Brad Johnson, the six foot six inch quarterback in there for Florida State. Crosses it to Sean Jackson, who is short of the first down as he goes down about the 41 yard line. So that series proved to be futile for Florida State thanks to the holding call. And now FSU will have to get rid of the ball as they bring in Scotty McLaren, who kicked it dead inside the seventh last time. Ray Adams goes back to take it for LSU. For 21 goes back to his 10 yard line. There it is again. It's going to come down inside the 10. Let's see if it checks up. Fair catch at the three. Do you believe it? Tim, you're the punt returner here. What do you what do you say to Ray Adams on that call? Ooh. You just sometimes you forget where you are, but uh, I'm sure Mike Archer will remind him where he was. Penn State's at Alabama. We'll see you with that ball game next Saturday afternoon. So after the fair catch by Adams, LSU first and ten from just outside their three. Chad Luke back in there at quarterback. Can't find anybody. He's going to run it out of there. Excellent gain to the 17 for Luke. Kirk Carruthers gets it. Gain of 12 yards. That gets LSU out of the hole. Or at least somewhat in better position. Another great job of coverage by the FSU secondary. Seminoles doing a fine job sticking with these Tiger receivers. Nobody there. Good protection again. Nobody there. Luke tries to run it out. Gets a first down. From the 17-yard line, Harvey Williams and Darrell Williams in the backfield. Here's Harvey running behind his brother. That's a good block out to the 21-yard line. Tackle made by John White, number 44 for FSU. They got a fine combination here in strong safety, FSU. Uh, Reagans and White, I mean, both of them real uh, Stanley Shiver type of guys, and uh, all the Seminole fans will remember him. Just the big hitters, both of them, and got a couple of really strong shots on some Auburn receivers last week I saw. And uh, just, just very, very aggressive and quick to get upfield. See that LSU has got the wrong end of the field position as they turned it over inside their 10 and FSU for some great punnings. Been nailing them back deep in their own territory. Have to go a long way on these drives. This time out to the 28-yard line as Williams tripped up by Troy Sanders. You also got to remember it's early in the game and sometime a team that is young loses its focus and it uh, just like Florida State against Auburn last week at 17 to 7 looked like they're going to start pulling away and all of a sudden the more, the more experienced Auburn team and and in in that home stadium uh, woke up and came back and pulled out a victory. It's down at the 27 yard line for the Bengal Tigers four and two coming into this ball game. Here's Harvey Williams excellent acceleration across the 35 yard line to the 36. 
Harvey was seven of seven carries for 42 yards. Then he was five carries for six yards. He's now got 15 carries in this ball game. But as you mentioned, uh, not real good field position, not in really in run pass situations. You start see seeing LSU mix in a few more play passes in first down as as those linebackers start firing up in, into the uh, the battle zone. Second down one. Toss it out to Kinchin. Kinchin gets the first down. What moves he has after the reception. That's where he is so dangerous. Last week against Kentucky, he turned about a three-yard pass completion into a 70-plus yard touchdown. You know, he just had an outstanding. He, he had a run uh, a couple of weeks ago. Also, he ran through everybody a couple of times. You get a little shake, and here he comes. A little basketball. He can go to his left. He can go to his right. But don't go back that way, Todd. <laughs> Remember, those guys are coming. <laughs> to the 45-yard line. First down, 10. Todd playing with sore ribs today. There you say, what do you call him, a big play receiver? Chad Loop is hit as he throws. Back the 34-yard line. That was Marvin Jones, who's not only big, he's fast. And a true freshman. Watch him work here. A true freshman. You know, he didn't get here until the fall and played for Miami Northwestern last year. His brother's Fred Jones, so, I mean, he's got it in his blood. And, uh, but he's going to be a great player for him here. Bobby Bowden said that he doesn't think a defensive player has made this much impact as a true freshman since Ron Simmons. And a great Florida State defender. Second down 10 at the 45. Luke gets to Williams. Williams is hauled down right at the line of scrimmage by James Cheney. Nose guard. Seminole defensive line playing a little better right now than we saw them against Auburn. But Chuck Amato is, uh, talks with pride about his guys, and there's Todrick McIntosh has uh, been nicked, isn't going to play. Uh, well, may play some. Deion Clark, DeAndre, excuse me, Clark, as Purdue is hanging in there. <laughs> DeAndre Clark is uh, also nicked, so that they've been injured up there, but the guys that are playing, he feels, are making a decent progress. Third down, 12. Luke. Almost a one-handed grab by Kinchin. If he hadn't got his hands on it, could have been a pickoff by Florida State. And uh, just couldn't pull it down. Yeah, and I, you know, he might have come off. This is where he's hurt, too. He's hurt on his right side. Watch him go up here. I mean, it takes guts. No wide receiver likes to catch the ball across the middle. They sure don't like to jump. And you see how he came down with that arm to protect his right side? That's where he's hurt in a, a valiant effort by Kinchin. Remember FSU got a hand on it last time. Buckley back to take the punt of Brian Griffin. Let's see if FSU goes for it. They've got 10 on the line. Here they come. This time, Griffith gets it away. Buckley at the 19. He can be excited. Not a lot this time. Out to the 28-yard line, Terrell Buckley. And we'll be back to Dope Campbell Stadium in just a moment. Florida State assistant coaches in the booth looking down on the field. We have 6.23 to go in the first half, and the Seminoles lead it 14-3. Van Hallinger and uh, second from the right. On the right was Mark Rick there, a quarterback at Miami. Uh, actually, when Mike Archer was a defensive backfield coach there, played behind Jim Kelly, and he's tutoring the quarterbacks now here at Florida State. FSU has Casey Weldon back in at quarterback after a series from Brad Johnson last possession. It was nullified basically because of that holding call. Here's the screen to the left side. Poorly thrown. Bennett can't hold it. It'll go incomplete. Well, Florida State really hasn't developed a lot of offense in this ball game. The two touchdowns came both inside the 10-yard line. I think you have to say that, uh, you know, John Mitchell and Joey Wessel and uh, those guys that John Fontes, uh, linebacker coach there at LSU have done a good job negating some of the real strength of this team. You know, Dossie hasn't been a factor yet, and Amp Lee, they've been around the football. They're doing a good job defensively. That time it was a double screen, Bob. Screen set up on both sides and uh, well covered. Second down 10 from the 28. Casey Weldon. Amp Lee tries the right side. To the 31 yard line, knocked out of bounds by Daryl McCorby. And please, just a sophomore from Chipley, Florida. The LSU sideline. Blake Miller. 
Landry and Freeman Smoot. I love doing LSU games. Name. Masanton. Bouton. Boute. Tom Play. This will be third down six from the 32. Make it third and seven. And a flag goes down. Maybe some movement over there on the Florida State side. Florida State not appearing offensively sharp in this ballgame. And that can happen, and you get a couple of plays, a couple of big breaks. Dead ball, illegal snap. Florida State, still third down. Illegal snap. They're going to spot this at about the 26 and a half yard line. Terry Monk, the referee today. <laughs> Third down 12. Five defensive backs in the game, Bob. See if Weldon's looking up Lawrence Dossie, number 29. The play fake, steps into the pocket. Went over toward Dossie or Reggie Johnson. Number 80, Johnson and Dossie. Ball really kind of split the two. And Weldon misfires this time. Thanks for once again another Florida State penalty, though, putting him in a hole. Last series penalty hurt Brad Johnson at quarterback. Now the penalty hurt from this time. They'll have to put it away. And Kenshin's returning punts. We did not expect this today with his sore ribs. This is John Wimberly about to punt the ball. It's a good one. Fair catch call for by Kenshin up here at the 40 yard line so he doesn't have to take a lick this time. 5.56 to go in the half. 18 to 3, but LSU just will start now with their best field position of the day. Days in is proud to recognize this week's classroom champion. She is Jennifer Marafino. Jennifer, a member of the Lady Seminole volleyball team, which has won five straight Metro Conference championships. She's maintained a 3.45 GPA in biology, plans to continue with a graduate degree in veterinary medicine. Jennifer Marafino, this week's Days in classroom champion. So LSU with breathing room. They're out at the 40-yard line to start this drive. The best position to start for the day for the Bengal Tigers. Harvey Williams runs into a crowd, gets about three on the right side. Let's go to Rob Thulin now. Thank you, Bob Neal. We go out to West Texas, Lubbock, Texas, to be exact. We're number eight, Miami, taking on the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Craig Erickson from Miami backpedals, tosses his second touchdown pass. This one, 11 yards to Lamar Thomas. They have just finished one quarter of play in Miami, Florida, leading Texas Tech, 14 nothing. Back to you, Bob. 42-yard line, LSU ball, second down, seven. Off the play fake, Luke. Complete detention. Got the first down, and then he's down at the 46. Gain of 11 yards for Todd Kinchin. That time they were really looking for Jacob in the flat. They didn't think Kinchin would have it. Play fake here. Loop sets up, looking in the flat, not there. Comes back to Kinchin, who's found an open area in the seam. Fowler trying to close, ducks up underneath the, the linebacker. And first down. LSU on the drive again. First and 10 at the 45 of Florida State. Seminoles leading 14-3. Loop has some more time. It's complete to Kenshin again. Avoids the tackler. Down hard at the 34. That was Carruthers' ninth tackle of the afternoon. Let's watch him work again. Carter going up the field. Kitchen breaking it down. Comes back to the football. If he'd have let that ball come to him and it had been intercepted. Keeps working back, working back, and Brothers really had a stop. It wasn't as vicious as it looked. First down 10 at the 33-yard line. Eight short drop. Right side looking for Kinchin. Well covered that time. He threw it out of bounds. Buckley was over there. About 70 degrees at kickoff here at Tallahassee, the cool spell came in. If it's below 75, people here consider it cool. I'm just laughing at the, you know, Buckley and Kinchin are pointing at each other. You know, Kinchin's got kind of a, he doesn't have a receiver mentality. You know, he's got more of a defensive back mentality, and uh, these guys are talking to each other. You know that. Second down 10 from the 33-yard line, LSU. 
And wherever Kinchin going goes, Buckley goes. There's an audible. Let's see what happens. Here they come. Loop hit as he throws it. He was looking for Kinchin. The blitz came on. Kenshin was the hot receiver. Buckley was down there again, and Loop went to his back. Howard Dinkins leveled it. Nice job by Loop for a redshirt freshman to be able to recognize that. Got the ball up in time, but Moss was just in his face. That's going to be a distraction. You got kind of somebody six five in your face. We'll keep you posted with scores all afternoon. Ron Thulin will have highlights at halftime, four minutes, 20 seconds away from the half here, with Florida State leading 14 to 3 at Duke Campbell Stadium. Third down, 10 LSU. Darrell Williams, the lone setback. He's back there for protection. Here comes the blitz. Loop is hit and tossed down at the 41. Carruthers having a whale of a game today. A loss of eight, ten tackles, and a sack for Carruthers. Well, all they needed was a little time there because uh, not everybody was covered downfield. Leon Fowler was covering Harvey Williams and Brian Kinchin. That time, Brad pulls the ball down. Work concerned about the fumble, which occurred earlier. Took the conservative route, pulled the ball down. Carruthers has been playing somewhat in the shadow of the true freshman Marvin Jones at inside linebacker this year. Great expectations for Carruthers, and he's not had a bad year, but he's really earning himself some publicity here today. Griffith with the punt. It's down at the five and out of bounds at the one-half yard line. What a job by Griffith. 39-yard punt for the junior. And now FSU will have to line up entirely in their own end zone. I think Attila the Hun was rough when he went out on his forages. Bobby Bowden's known as king of the road. He developed the reputation of Florida State University's football team by taking this team into hostile territory, beating them, then taking a clip of the sod back for the graveyard. He's been very successful at uh, LSU. This is the first time LSU has ever played here. Bobby said that 1979 win was the biggest win of his early career at Florida State. He's something. He said he, you know, he coached at Alabama. He said when he came here, they'd won four games in the previous three years. When he got here, he said, when I was at Alabama, I heard beat Auburn. When I was at West Virginia, I heard beat Pitt. When I came here, they said, beat anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, the entire FSU team in the end zone. He just barely gets out of there, out to about the one and a half yard line. John Morgan and Anthony Marshall making the stop. So now FSU getting a little bit of their own medicine. They've been nailing LSU inside the five. You got to give that group credit today. You know, we saw them struggle against Vanderbilt, and they have really come back and played admirably here this afternoon. With that last two drives, FSU seven plays only five yards. Second down nine. Once again, the backfield in the end zone. Weldon's going to sprint out of there. Got some blocking. He's just going to run it up in there to the seven and a half. Needs to get across the 10 to the 11 for the first down. Coming up, the Georgia Pacific Halftime Report. Ron Thulin will have scores and highlights from around the country. Conversation with Roy Kramer, the SEC commissioner, and a tribute to Frank Sinkwich, first SEC Heisman Trophy winner. That'll all be coming up at halftime. A lot of news going on in the SEC with the expansion and the addition of Arkansas and of South Carolina. And, of course, now the debate going on between the athletic directors and the coaches about exactly how to divide the conference and how to get those games scheduled. And that's tough because... Everybody knows the traditions run deep and long in the SEC. A lot of people thought Florida State would be in the SEC, but they opted for the ACC. Football play there will start about 1994, 93. And as Weldon talks to uh, Brad Scott and Bob Bowden, what do you think about that? They picked the ACC. As we take a look at the SEC standings, I think it's a pretty good move for Florida State, actually. 
Florida State wouldn't make a big impact in the SEC because of all those good teams you're looking at right there. But taking their football program to the ACC, they become a very powerful thing there, and it also helps the ACC. So, And the SEC did well, I think, with Arkansas and South Carolina. We'll be seeing down the road, although both Arkansas and South Carolina were losing today. LSU, 2-2 two and two on the season. You're on. That whole expansion and changes in college football are going to change the entire picture of college football in the next three or four years. Nobody's quite sure exactly what's going to happen. Of course, Miami electing to go to the Big East where they don't even have a football conference yet. So that means that Virginia and Georgia Tech and Clemson aren't in it, right? <laughs> That's right. Third down three from the eight. Here is Weldon. He fakes it, toss it out to his tight end for the first down. Good grab by Reggie Johnson. Once again, innovative play calling. Nice job of acting by Weldon. He bootlegged the ball around and tossed it out to Reggie Johnson. That's a Bobby Bowden special right there. Oh, Bobby, he is, uh, and he's loved by everybody the media the fans and uh, of course he provides a lot of wins for the fans they like him he provides a lot of quotes for the media it's like he had a question about discipline you know you maybe have some discipline problems he said you know if I've always said that if short hair and perfect manners won football games Army and Navy would play for the national title every year <laughs> <laughs> there's that play fake again hit hard as Weldon as he got rid of it the 25 yard line freshman Matt Fryer from nearby Live Oak Florida oh my what a play John Morgan levels Casey Weldon who got off the pass anyway the play action whenever whenever you got Bobby Bowden backed up you can be ready for the he gets nailed lets it go and this ball is right on the money look at Fryer looking right over the top Williams in perfect position couldn't have been any better pow he takes a lick down they go John Morgan just a split second too late Weldon did not see that ball caught but he knew what happened does he have a gun 54 yards in the air off his back foot first down just outside the 25 FSU leading 14 3 152 to go in the half Weldon short toss this time goes to Ampley Ampley first down tight ropes his way down to the 11 yard line Rebello Swan chased him out over there well, that's more what they're used to seeing that quick three step drop if the angle if the slant isn't there get it to the guy to flat right now pop pop. So the 54 yard completion Weldon to Matt Fryer sets up Florida State for another touchdown opportunity. Archer looking on and been in this situation before of course as a secondary coach for Howard Schnellenberger. Worked for Tom Olivadotti, who is now the Take defensive coordinator with the Dolphins, and of course for Bill Arnsbarger. Look at this inside the 20. Florida State has scored 27 of 28. <laughs> Weldon walks it into the end zone. There's fire tipped away at the last moment by Corey Raymond. Great defensive play. That was there, Tim. Fryer and Casey Weldon trying to. Trying to make a statement about what the Seminole fans have in store for them in the future. But Corey Raymond really did an, an outstanding job of getting his body around, locating the ball, and tapping it away just in time. Prior red shirt freshman. He's only 5'10, 185 pounds. It's a lonely spot out there. You're a cornerback down there. Good there. Here's the run right up the middle. And Lee spinning and driving to the two. Marshall hauling down. Apley takes it down to the doorstep. One of the scary things about calling man coverage, or in this instance, a blitz. Somebody gets walled off and they run the draw. Great job by Anthony Marshall squaring up Ampley, which is almost an impossible task, and holding him out of the end zone. Just an excellent job. Good job of running by Ampley. Going to bring joy to Seminole fans for a long time to come. 
this is third down and two. If you can actually get a first down without getting a touchdown here, if they get it inside the one, and FSU decides to call a timeout to talk this one over, there are 56 seconds left in the half. We'll be right back to Doak Campbell Stadium. In the uh, bird cage crane camera high above the Florida State University scoreboard, you talk about tough duty. Right, she's uh, evil Knievel's niece. <laughs> <laughs> this will be third down and two for Florida State. Ampley wants the right side. It's been successful before, and there's again three touchdowns off the right side today for Ampley. He has eight touchdowns rushing on the year now. A 54-yard pass from Weldon to Matt Fryer set this play up. 99-yard drive. Remember, the Griffith punt went out of bounds at the Florida State one-yard line. What a drive by the Seminoles. Richie Andrews. Point after is good. 21 to 3, Florida State, with 52 seconds to go in the half. Well, you can't call that a cheap touchdown. Starting at their own one yard line, innovative play calling and a courageous pass from Weldon to Fryer to set it up. And a couple of youngsters, too. Uh, Casey Weldon's a junior, but Matt Fryer coming in here, a lot of quickness. Let's look at this touchdown here. Off the right side again. That's Find a third my time. Pen. See Reggie Johnson. Watch Reggie Johnson working here. And again, a good lead blocked by Edgar Bennett. And here we go. Um, hear the momentum. Lee sticks with it on the outside. Not a bad job of defense by LSU. They just never got it contained. They just never got him turned back to the inside. Here he was searching, 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 looking for the hole. Marshall trying to get there. Just can't do it. Ampley has 10 carries for only 42 yards, but he has three short touchdown runs on the day. And LSU is in desperate need of a big play. They've had the big mistakes. Now they need the big play. 99-yard drive. Beckham and Watkins back there. Watkins number two, Beckham number 33. This is going to go out of bounds by a long way. They were trying to pin him over in the corner the idea of that kickoff and they'll walk it back and try it again after the five yard penalty. So Florida State lost two in a row last year to open up their season to Southern Miss and Clemson then met Mike Archer's LSU Tigers after they had to win. This year FSU loses two in a row to Miami and Auburn. Once again here comes LSU and Mike Archer's Tigers having to face a desperate FSU team. Of course, Mike Archer's football team a lot better off than they were last year at this time. Last year, I think they were one and five. Now four and two, and they had a, a lot of things to get worked out on that football team last year. And he feels a lot better about this group here, even though they are young and inexperienced, and he knows he's going to have to grow with them for a little while. Uh, he feels good about the way they're working together, the, their attitude, and that's what's important. Beckham at the eight yard line. Through the 25 yard line. 45 seconds remaining. 17 yard kickoff return. 45 seconds in the first half. Florida State leading at 21 to 3. Yeah, another thing about uh, Archer, he was under a lot of fire last year. And as you know, he's got the benefit too of having Joe Dean there, who is kind of the master of personal relations as athletic director. But uh, under a lot of fire to to actually fire some of his assistants and uh, coaches have done that in the past and he kind of hung with his guys and he said it's the same group that took us to 10 one and one and we're going to stick with them through the tough times and got things going loop under pressure again chased out of bounds just at the 30 Carl Simpson was just licking his chops <laughs> slow down Chad slow down Archer's only 37 years old. He was only, what would that make him, 20? Bobby Bowden was 23 when Mike Archer was born. 
And this is, you know, he's Bobby's going for his 200th victory. I think Mike's going for his 27th. Got to get 27 to get 200, I guess. Second down for his pressure again. Penalty markers. And Luke goes down at the 31 yard line. Clock down to 30 seconds in the half. So LSU, a run oriented football team, now falls behind 21 to 3. Tim, they're going to have to start putting it in the air more, and they're certainly not as comfortable having to go to the air. But trailing by this score, I think we're going to have to see that in the second half. Probably, but I, I think that, again, they're going to work in the run. I don't think it, it's too early to panic because things can happen. And uh, their defense takes the ball away a couple times. Face mask, Florida State, five yard penalty, first down. They'll move it out to the 35. With 30 seconds remaining in this half. Chad Luke continues quarterbacking. Saul Graves, fifth year senior, came in for one series for LSU. Looking for the out pattern to Kinchin, incomplete. 20 seconds to go in the half. Luke trying to stick it in between the, the short zone and the deep back John Davis and uh, you notice that Todd didn't put up his arm that time <laughs> Todd, Todd Davis had it in his scope he was uh, going to do some damage to the young wide receiver if he'd have gone for that ball loop four of 11 for only 40 yards passing today Graves came in with two or three for four yards on the second down he's going to run out of there gets the first down and out of bounds up near midfield with 13 seconds to go I really don't think they have a threat at tight end and uh, LSU doesn't want to be in the situation where they have to throw the football of course right now we're at the end of the half and uh, they'll whip one down the field and uh, see what can happen they certainly found out what almost could happen against Vanderbilt several weeks ago when uh, Kitchen came down with the ball only to have that uh, that touchdown nullified First down from the 48. Luke fumbles the ball on the tackle. It's recovered by Florida State as time clicks down to three seconds remaining. And Florida State will have an opportunity. Carl Simpson with his second fumble recovery of the day. Reggie Freeman raked it out of there, and Simpson came up with it. Plenty of time. A good job by the offensive line of LSU. Just need to put that ball away, Chad. Try to make something happen. Get it put away. And he'll learn that as time goes on, as his experience grows. But some of these plays he's never going to forget. Well, FSU will have one opportunity to throw it up for grabs here with three seconds left. It's uh, out of field goal range. They won't try to do that turnover story and that has been the story of this ball game one long FSU drive that last one of 99 yards but the other two came after turnovers inside the 10. Well do they ever let Rick Richie Andrews try to kick field goals. I mean he put one out of the park earlier here. He could reach from there. We know that. Might have as good a chance with those three points as they would have trying to throw up the Hail Mary. It gives me time to remind you that the NBA season is upon us. Our sister station TNT will have 50 regular season games this year. I'll be hitting the road a week from Tuesday myself. We're going to warm it up with a Hall of Fame game. Akeem Olajuwon, the Houston Rockets match up against the NBA champion Detroit Pistons. That's from Springfield, Massachusetts. And it's next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. It's the final preseason game of the year. Pete Van Weren and Rick Barry will have that. Rick is in the Hall of Fame there in Springfield. Tuesday night at 8 on TBS. The timeout called by Casey Weldon here. It's early in the game to stall. Not quite sure about uh, the pattern they want. See John Eason there. John is a guy that's uh, been at Florida State for the last nine years. A coach with a white hat on and he's been that's him. We haven't seen the front yet, but it looks like John. Been coaching all these wide receivers. That's now what do they call Florida State now? Wide receiver you. We've been talking about how young these 
football teams are today, both LSU and FSU. Not many seniors. Matter of fact, Bobby Ball, Bobby Bowden calls this the no senior bowl today. Because there's so many youngsters who are playing on the team. A lot of a lot of freshmen, only three seniors playing for LSU in the game today. Now we're about ready to get started. Three seconds remaining in the half. The LSU secondary has enough depth. If we can uh, pick them up in the picture or not. But they are lined up on the five yard line. Looks like a Hail Mary right. Weldon gets chased out of there. Now he's going to go all the way to the end zone. Could be interesting. Touchdown things. The oh, game is tough God. when you do something right, though, it's going to be harmful. <laughs> Here comes the point after. Well, you know it's never going to be boring when you're watching the Seminoles. 28 to 3. That was a three second remaining play. Weldon sets it up, then rolls to the outside, giving his players as much time as he can to get down there, get up, get set up, get in position. And now it's just a jump ball. Everybody up. Raymond there, Marshall there, and Shannon Baker. Good concentration, comes out with the football for six points. 81, Kevin Knox gets up high, gets his hands on it, as does Dossie. That's a great grab by Shannon Baker. Well, at halftime, the score is LSU 28, Louisiana State 3. Florida State leading it by a score of 28 to 3 at the halftime. It was 21 3 with three seconds left. And coaches key always tell their players, remember, with three seconds, we've got a chance to get it in the end zone. Now the Florida State players are going to believe Bobby Bowden. <laughs> I guess. And this has <laughs> kind of been indicative of the first half for LSU. Played real good on defense, played uh, uh, well on offense, competitively on offense. But this is kind of it says it all in terms of a drop, kickoff. A fumble by the quarterback, both set up five yard scoring drives by FSU, a long pass. And then this one here. Good alert play. Seminoles up for the ball. Tigers up for the ball. Shannon Baker, six points with three seconds left. And uh, just a, a sad, sad uh, way to end the half if you're an LSU fan. Now, 13 uh, first downs for LSU, 159 yards passing for Florida State, but 92 of those yards come on two plays. So they just haven't done a nice, they haven't done a good job eliminating the big play. So a 54-yard pass play set up a touchdown, and then the 38-yard pass play there in the last play of the first half with only three seconds left on Hail Mary pass. So we're underway in the second half from Dope Campbell Stadium. And they'll spot the ball right about the 27 yard line. Eric Terrell with the run back for Florida State. And they'll spot it, yes, at the 27 yard line. And the Seminoles lead it by a score of 28 to 3. As you take a look at the first half drives, and you see they didn't for the two touchdowns, had to go 16 yards and only seven yards for the first part of that for Florida State. Then they did have one 99 yard drive before the half ended. Casey Weldon continues at quarterback. It is open over the middle. That is to 32 Paul Moore. Make it Edgar Bennett, who is out to the 34 yard line. And here's the first half drives in the second quarter. A stretch there. The LSU defense playing really strong. And uh, then FSU took it 99 yards. And then they come up with a big uh, pass right before the end of the first half. That's 14 points on the board in a hurry. Bennett and Amp Lee in the backfield for the Seminoles. Dossie and Baker, the receivers, they run it inside. Not much going there. Edgar Bennett 
hit by John Morgan. Yeah, as you pointed out, Tim, LSU, in terms of most of the time that, of the plays that took place in the first half, played pretty even. But the turnovers and, and the Hail Mary pass right at the end have made it a very lopsided score. I'm sure that's what Mike Archer told his players at halftime. We're not playing that badly, save for the mistakes. Right, you know, you take three plays out of that, and you got a pretty, uh, pretty solid first half. But unfortunately, they don't let you take any plays out. <laughs> like, I'll take this one out and this one. Nope, you got to use them all. Here comes a reverse. It's Dossie. Got a block from Casey Weldon. And there's the seam for Dossie. Driven out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Boy, did, did Dossie and Amp Lee and Casey Weldon lay out some blocks there. First, they gave it to Amp Lee. He handed it to Dossie. When you're practicing and preparing for Florida State, you always throw a couple of plays like this into the practice, as John Mitchell said he did. Morgan almost got a hold of him, but he couldn't hang on. Then Marshall knocks him out of bounds. But uh, you just got to always be aware. If the play goes away, something could be coming back. All the way to the 41-yard line of the LSU Bengal Tigers. Johnson goes in motion. Short toss to Ant Lee. Hall down short of the 35 yard line. Ravel Rose Swan with the stop. Yeah, so Casey Weldon made a block there to help spring Dossie on that end around and uh, remind me a little bit of Tommy Luke over at Ole Miss. And I think the same kind of attitude. You know, these guys have linebacker attitudes. It's just like they uh, talked about uh, Chad Luke, the guys in the weight room, the workout room. They, it, it, it's a kind of a new breed of quarterback coming out, a competitor uh, for that linebacker John Wayne mentality, not just stand back there and look pretty and do commercials. <laughs> Hit from behind by Mark Boutte. Weldon goes down at the 43-yard line. Loss of eight yards on the play. Weldon had a lot of time. Brad Scott's got to be proud of his offensive line here. The Seminoles gave him plenty of time. They tried to pump the short one and lay it up over the top, try to get the linebacker to bite in there. And uh, finally, Boutte came around the outside. And, you know, as we mentioned before, he's the leader in that front. And, uh, you know, he's got experience in, in these type of situations. And he's just telling those guys, let's get some pride and go get them. Third down 13. Well, the penalty marker's down. Incomplete down at the 25-yard line. And... Shannon Baker had to actually break that up or it could have been an interception. Wayne Williams was covering down there. Penalty marker down. Let's watch Williams work against Baker. The man to man underneath. Williams gets on the inside. Breaks on the inside. He's got help deep and he wants to trail on that inside shoulder. He broke in there and uh, as you mentioned Bob Shannon Baker breaks it up. Give him a PBU in the statistics. <laughs> have a face mask on Florida State. The penalty's declined. It'll be fourth down. And Florida State had the ball at the 43-yard line of LSU. They'll have to give it up there. They'll bring in Scotty McLaren to punt. McLaren, the guy who's so good at getting that ball down inside the 10. He's done it twice today. Sophomore from Griffin, Georgia. Looks like this one's got a chance. Fair catch, signal four. It takes... And LSU bounce in this case and goes into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line where LSU will take over first down 10. 8-3, to 11.40 to go third quarter. Here's what LSU did in the first half in terms of their drives in the first quarter. They got a field goal after that 60-yard drive, but then the fumble inside their own seven. That led to a Florida State touchdown. You see the rest of them, three punts and another fumble. That and led FSU, to the Hail Mary. Exactly. FSU playing good defense and... Uh, and FSU's offense has taken advantage of every turnover. They've turned it into points. Chad Luke continues at quarterback. He'll have to go to the air a little bit more now. Misses Todd Kenshin. Look at that. There are five garnet and gold jerseys around Todd Kenshin out there at about the 30-yard line. Let's look at how they're surrounded here. They're running a little slant on the outside. Harvey Williams running in the flat. There's the hole. The ball is late. And uh, he'll come along in time, a redshirt freshman. 
Just got to look a little quicker, get the ball going. Got a great teacher, Ed Zahnbrecher, the offensive coordinator for LSU. Did all right with Tommy Ott. Second down, 10. They run it with Williams. He gets about three, not much more. Williams had 42 yards on his first seven carries, but only 67 at the half after carrying the ball 18, uh, 17 times. And uh, the FSU de defense has really settled down. Let's watch Marvin Jones here. Uh, Carruthers gets picked off, and Jones gets in on the action. But the defensive line has done a more effective job this afternoon of protecting those two linebackers. They had a little trouble against Auburn as linemen were getting through on them, but not so much this afternoon. On the third down, six. Luke running out of trouble. It's picked off. Incomplete. No, they're saying it is picked off. Leon Fowler into the hands of Kinchin. Popped out of his hands into the arms of Fowler. First, the official signaled incomplete, and then he signaled a reception. You know, and uh, Mike Archer's response to this, I'm sure, is this isn't happening. Kitchen breaks it off, got plenty of room. Fowler coming. He just doesn't look it in. Fowler alertly completes his follow through, makes the catch. You know, it's a totally clear sky here in Tallahassee, Bob, but. If you're at LSU, it may rain. You know, I mean, it's just one of those days. It's just, it's one of those days. If you fell out of bed, you probably wouldn't hit the floor. Florida State with the ball first again at the 32-yard line. Quick handoff up the middle. It goes to Edgar Bennett inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line. You know, that's only the second interception of the year for LSU quarterbacks in 142 pass attempts. You know, and they've taken good care of the football. In terms of turnovers, I think they were second in the SEC in terms of fewest, uh, 17th in the nation. But uh, it's just been one of those days this afternoon. Early in the third quarter, Florida State now with another opportunity. They're up 28 to 3. And they have the ball at the 27 yard line of LSU. And Lee tripped up. Dives inside the 25. They have to go to about the 21 and a half for the first down. Reggie Walker gets ready for the tackle. Amply. We've been joined in the booth by David Neal. Who works for Channel 27, a talented young broadcaster. Must come from good parentage. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. You play golf? How'd you do it? Did you beat him? No, you I guys never play did. golf. You no, never I gave did. that up years ago. Uh -huh. I gave that up years ago. We're going to play again tomorrow. Dave has his priorities in line. He got two two times. Yeah. The, the, the other child represents him. He's an attorney. Exactly. Not, not a bad way to go. Shannon Baker, the intended receiver, and it falls incomplete. Weldon has just been calm all all afternoon. He just uh, really seems un unfettered by all the attention and the, the change. He just has a good time. A couple times came to the sidelines and he just kind of talks to Bob. And I think that one of the things about playing for Bobby Bowden is when you play for him, you're going to have fun. You know, you win some, you lose some, but uh, he just got a good spirit. Andrews going for the field goal. It goes wide to the left, and that's about the first thing that's gone wrong for Florida State today. They continue to lead 28 to 3 with 9.28 to go in the third quarter from Tallahassee. To three in Tallahassee. Beautiful afternoon for everybody but the LSU Tigers. 9.28 to go in the third quarter. Tim and I are already making our New Year's Eve reservations. I know where I'm going to be New Year's Eve. It, it, you know, you wouldn't think I'd plan that far ahead. I'm going to be in Tucson with you. Tucson, Arizona for the Domino's Pizza Copper Bowl, huh? That's, I like that. Oh, man, it's going to be great. Stay at the Ventana Canyon Resort again. I'm not sure that that's where we're going to stay, but, you know, that was a nice place to stay. But you got that right. <laughs> Nice to think about here in October afternoon. Out to about the 27-yard line, the handoff goes. Not much happening on the first down play. Bobby Bowden well on his way to his 200th victory of his prestigious coaching career. Coached at Samford, 59 to 62, West Virginia after that, and then Florida State since 1976. And only Joe Paterno has won more games than Bobby among active coaches today. Second down nine, LSU. Looking for the big play somewhere. 
And here they come with Slip Watkins. He's got the blazing speed. Hauled out of bounds out at the 43-yard line by Tommy Henry, but a big gainer, an 18-yard gainer, with Slip Watkins coming on the end around. And let's look at Slip coming back around the horn. Okay, you know, he is a track man and uh, was redshirted last year actually because of his track activity. He was so active there and leading LSU to some outdoor track championships. Great speed and almost came up with a big one. Out to the 44 yard line, first down. LSU's been held out of the end zone. And a field goal to show for their efforts today. Williams making some nice moves. A run of about 10 yards. That's his best effort since early in the first quarter. That's at that, uh, O.J. Hop. The reminiscent of the great O.J. Simpson. Just kind of slips through there. Feet not too far off the ground. Gets him back in a hurry. Broom. Now he's back down on the ground and just ready to move back. Cut back against the grain. Trying to find that seam. Break a big one. Harvey's kind of a stand-up runner. 6'3", 208. That's a little tall for a, for a running back. It seems though the evolution has taken them shorter and shorter and shorter, especially with wide receivers. Chad Luke with a play fake and an incompletion intended for number one Marcus Carter, the redshirt freshman. Bill Reagan's covering on the play. So Luke doesn't connect, it'll bring up second down. And probably pressing a little bit as Reagan walk, walks back to the huddle. Uh, one of the defensive captains one of the seniors one of the few seniors on this uh, Florida State defense but Chad Luke probably pressing a little bit a uh, little distraught by his earlier mistakes uh, fumbles in the first half trying to do something to make up for that a four of 14 today with one interception here's Harvey Williams trying to turn the corner that's a good block and runs into his own player short of first down at about the 38 yard line Looked like we tripped over Wesley Jacob there as uh, Jacob was working trying to keep a defensive back out of the action. View from the band. Florida State with a great music school here. This is how the band member sees the game right there. <laughs> Third down two from the 39. Reagan on the blitz again. They get the pass away. It falls incomplete intended for Williams. Reagan's was right in Chad Loop's face again. Number 15 for Florida State. Watch him come here. On the outside, Moss coming. They pick him up. Reagan is uh, unaccounted for. And there are some plays that uh, you'll have that situation on. And the quarterback's job is to unload it. And uh, that time he did get it to Harvey Williams. Williams just couldn't hang on. So it'll be fourth down and about two. And LSU is going to go ahead and go for it here, trailing 28 to three. Three receivers over to the right side. Single setback is the fullback, Darrell Williams. Pressure and Luke goes down at the 47-yard line. Coming in from the right side, Kirk Carruthers with his second sack of the day. Well, that's just inexperience on the quarterback's part. He checks off, and, uh, you know, when you get in that situation, you know you got to get rid of it in a hurry. You get something called to the inside, but you can unload the ball either in the back pedal or on a three-step drop. That time, he's taken it back a little bit too far, and again, obviously a good job of coverage by the Seminoles. Another sack for Kirk Crothers. We'll be back. Well, that is Kirk Carruthers, and today is going to be even a bigger MOC with uh, two sacks, 11 tackles on the day for the inside linebacker. We talked a lot about the true freshman playing right beside him, who has just been having a whale of a season, Marvin Jones, but today it's been Carruthers. I think Jones has probably brought the best out of Carruthers. You now, before the season started, Carruthers had a, you know, a lot of verbiage how great he was going to be, and uh, Jones kind of stole the spotlight. Here's Sean Jackson, the true freshman from New Orleans, by the way. 
Number 37, Sean Jackson, the ball carrier. He's 6'2", 220 pound tailback, and Bobby Bowden thinks he has the potential to be a really great Wayne one. Wayne he hasn't had a chance to up. use him very much so far this year. He can post it on scores around the country this afternoon. Chuck Pickett. Chuck Vanderbilt Pickett. in an Please SEC contest. It's an ACC scores. <laughs> you have to have a scorecard to keep up with the conferences these days. Second down, seven. And off the way to the left side. That is a big load carrying the ball. Paul Moore weighs in at 245 pounds, the fullback. Wade Williams is 5'8", 193. Mike just wants his team to stay in there and fight. You know, don't let go of the rope. Just keep pulling, and there'll be another day when you can line up again. Now, they were 16 and a half point underdogs coming into this football game. Uh, I, I didn't really understand that uh, at the time. And the turnovers and big plays have made it, made that look like a good estimate, but uh, this can be a good LSU football team. Here comes Sean Jackson again. Cuts against the green, drives for the first down. Show you the strength of this 18-year-old. Uh, speaking of uh, what's coming up next for Florida State University, they go ahead and continue to win this game. You can see that they'll be favored in all the games coming up. South Carolina, Cincinnati, Memphis State, and Florida should be a tough one, but that's going to be here at Stoke Campbell. And LSU is going to have a tough one right off the shoot next week against Ole Miss, then at Alabama. Best Ole Miss team that we've seen in the last nine years. And, of course, Alabama seems to be on the rebound. On the sprint out, Weldon with the toss. It is complete. The number 81, Kevin Knox at the 32. That should be an... It'll depend on where they spot it. Could be enough for a first down. Gain of 10 yards. There's Knox. He's a freshman from Niceville, Florida. On that particular play, you saw what they like about Casey Weldon. He's mobile. He can go to his left. He can go to his right. Just a real good athlete. Brad Johnson, who had started previously, is, is also a good athlete, but at 6'6", is not quite as mobile. And that way, not in that play, Knox just worked himself free eventually. Weldon bought time getting outside and then popped it in there to Kevin. Just short of the first down, second down inches. Hand off to Sean Jackson, running hard, almost broke that tackle. Inside the 30, David Walkup falls him down, the inside linebacker for LSU. 28-3, Florida State with five minutes to go, third quarter. Walkup. He's the only returning starter at linebacker you know, he's for this defense. And, uh, you know, and he's, he's a sophomore. He's a sophomore, so, <laughs> you know, uh, Everybody else had uh, changed positions or changed alignments, gone from left to right corner or gone from nose to tackle, and uh, walk-up was the only returning starter at linebacker. First down from the 29. They run Sean Jackson again. Sean Jackson with about eight yards. This is the most experience Sean Jackson has received this year for Florida State. And I've been telling you, Bobby Bowden has been wanting to get him in the game. He says he keeps saying to himself, I'm going to use him this game. I'm going to use him this game. And then he says, we get in the Miami game and we have troubles. We have the Auburn game and it's so close. And today he said, I'm just going to force myself to get Sean Jackson some time. <laughs> and you know, you can't tell what Bobby Bowden's going to do. He doesn't know what he's going to do sometimes. So some coaches, they take different approaches to the game. Some coaches have the first 20 plays mapped out. And I'm not sure he's really decided which side of the field he's going to line up on, you know, before they before they hit the hit the turf. Second down two, play fake. Weldon with plenty of time has an open receiver. It is an incomplete at the 16-yard line. And Reggie Johnson is angry over the call. Let's go to Ron Fulan in Atlanta. Thank you very much, Bob Neal. It is a wild one at Bobby Dodge Stadium in Atlanta. Duke pulled it in 24-21 of Georgia Tech, but. On the ensuing kickoff, Kevin Tisdale of Georgia Tech, watch him, he bounces out to the outside. Nothing but daylight to Pater, 85 yards for the touchdown. That gives Georgia Tech a 31-21 lead over Duke, and they are in the third quarter. Bob? A lot closer ball game in Atlanta than most people expected that to be. You see Kevin Mancini, the right tackle, being helped off the field for Florida State. Let's watch the end of this last play. Reggie Johnson out there in the flat comes back for the football. Oh. 
A little, a little, a little <laughs> incomplete. I think I heard it rattling around in there. <laughs> Me too. I'm but going with the official. But that's one. an A plus for what do you mean? He's in theater school. Right, yeah. On the third down two, they run it off the right side. Well, there's some power running by Sean Jackson. Amp Lee at six feet 195 and Sean Jackson at 66 to 220 gives Bobby Bowden a little bit of change of pace there tailback one more a little bit more of a scat back type. You know and there's no question about it as football has evolved uh, you know you need depth because more and more schools are rolling people in and out of there and uh, they can just wear you down so you got a couple of running backs like that. Uh, I, I'd, I'd want him to be out of breath if I was on defense. Here's the handoff to the fullback Paul Moore. Inside the 15 down to about the 13 and Florida State now just wearing out this LSU defensive team. They've been on the field for a lot of plays in this quarter. Well, you know, coaches, uh, I think, have a certain amount of empathy for each, uh, for each other and Bobby knows that, uh, you know, he's, his team has played well but they've, they've gotten some breaks and and uh, you know, we know that knows that uh, that Archer's having an uncomfortable time. So 28 to three, if he's not going to try to embarrass anybody. Chewing up clock, 2:57 to go in the third quarter. This is second down, seven from the 13. Weldon can't find anybody. Calling signals from. The end zone, it's picked off by LSU out to the eight yard line. Weldon was directing traffic, threw it into the end zone, intended for Kevin Knox, but Wayne Williams came and picked it off, number 23. I'll tell you who he wanted originally. He wanted the tight end, and a great job by Ravel Rose Swan on the tight end. Stayed right with the tight end. You see, he couldn't find him. Now he gets outside of the pocket. Knox coming inside, but Wayne Williams all over him. Makes a move on the football and makes the interception. Probably not real sure where he is right now, but he sees green below him and he says, I better keep going. And we have a timeout on the field. We'll be back to Doak Campbell Stadium right after this. Picnic for Florida State leading 28 to 3. But speaking of picking, an interception by LSU, and they have the ball here out at the eight and a half yard line, trailing 28 3, 237 to go, third quarter. Now Saul Graves in for another series. He hands it to Harvey Williams, who broke a tackle or two and gets it to the 11 or 12 yard line. And Saul Graves is one of those uh, fairy tale stories in a sense. You know, his dad played at LSU, White, and uh, I think he ran a, ran back an interception for 100 yards against Kentucky back in the, the earlier days. And, Still holds that record, and all Saul ever wanted to do is play quarterback for LSU, and stuck with it, and stuck with it, and stuck with it, and backed up, and backed up, and just had an opportunity to play a lot of football this year for him. Not much opportunity for LSU on that play. Once again, that defensive line for Florida State playing much better in this game than they have in recent games. Uh, Simpson, Cheney, Troy Sanders have all played very well today. Harvey Williams is up over 100 yards. Or, or near 100 yards. He has 92 rushing for 22 carries. Old Bobby Bowden. I'm sure he talked to his son Tommy, who's the offensive coordinator at Kentucky, about this LSU defense and what to do against them. Graves throwing that tough out pattern. It is incomplete, intended for Williams out there at about the 34 yard line. Tough pass to complete. He doesn't. And they'll turn it over to Florida State again. Well thrown ball and good coverage. You see Brad Scott in the sunglasses. Uh, replaced Wayne McDuffie. Folks at Florida State of course miss Wayne. He's with the Atlanta Falcons. But Brad Scott doing a fine job coordinating the offense here. FSU's going after this punt again. Ten men on the line. Buckley's out at the 50. No penalty marker goes down, even though Griffith did. Buckley catches it at the 50. Griffith wanted a flag, didn't get it, got off a 39-yard punt. FSU has it right at midfield. Looked like they hit him, but uh, 
remember punters do throw a little bit of an act onto that. Didn't get the call from the official, and FSU takes over with once again outstanding field position. Minute 17 to go in the third quarter. Georgia Tech's added another touchdown now, stretching their lead. Ole Miss out in front of Vanderbilt. 17th ranked Ole Miss will be the next opponent for LSU. We thought for a minute we were going. Going to get the eat oysters at Phil's Oyster Bar, but alas. <laughs> Joe put up the flag. Casey Weldon rifles it down the middle. What a great grab. That's Warren Hart, the red shirt freshman tight end. Sprinting down the middle, 32-yard grab, and Bobby Bowden just keeps reloading. Now, hold it. There is a penalty marker down as we watch this replay. That young man was wide open. Fine catch. What it was, Bob, they are playing a two-deep zone, and the, the, the fake held the linebackers, and there is nobody back in the deep middle of the field in that particular situation. Holding Florida State, that would have been Warren Hart's first career collegiate reception. And a good release by Warren Hart. Worked his way around Juan Sendoya, who's from Miami, Columbus High School. Well, spotted back here at the 40, where it's now first down 20, Florida State. The penalties continue to mount for Florida State. They once again are up in the near the 50 yards, the six for 44. About 100 last week. Complete to Dossie with a nice move after the catch. Dives out to the 47 yard line. Dossie's been uncharacteristically quiet today. They really haven't got the ball to him that much. LSU's plan seems to have shut him down. Only two catches of 13 against Miami. So that's a positive note for the LSU defense. They've been really spreading out the passing, though. Eight different Florida State players have caught passes today. This is second down 14. Weldon. Ooh, gets rid of it under pressure. It is complete all the way to the 33 yard line to Paul Moore, the fullback. 17 yard pass completion. The pressure from Mark Boutte, number 95. I think Morton might have got there too, might have fought his way over there. Let's see. Well, looking downfield, nobody there at first. Boutte chasing him down, and here comes Scott Wharton. And uh, it didn't look like it there, but I mean, he really unloaded on him. And just a tremendous play. Just displays the athletic ability of Casey Weldon. Ready for the fourth quarter now with Florida State leading by a score of 28 to 3. You get that kind of feeling in this kind of ball game that there's just not any way that LSU can come back. They have been unsuccessful in throwing the ball, and they're going to have to start trying to do that more. Yeah, and uh, this one is just best to be over. Yeah. For all of us. <laughs> Fifteen more minutes. Stay with us. We'll uh, have some entertaining stories for you, and you never know what Bobby Bowden will do. I'm sure we're going to see some more interesting plays from Florida State. And that's called truth in broadcasting. Ready for the final 15 minutes from Doak Campbell Stadium. Florida State. Nice play fake by Weldon. He completes it to Hardy. Finally gets his first collegiate reception after having the other one nullified. So Florida State coming off a two game losing streak is really taking it out on LSU here today even though the score is only 28 to 3 FSU is knocking at the door once again. Dossie split way out wide to the left side almost off the field and almost off the screen up there. They hand it to Sean Jackson. Let's see if he can avoid some tackles. No they get him in the backfield. Good penetration by this LSU defense on that particular play. 
Boutte is in there again. He's been very active today. A sack. And he's uh, had a lot of quarterback pressures. Bobby Bodden on his way to victory number 200 this afternoon here in Tallahassee. And there's never been one that wasn't interesting from some facet. You know, he always adds uh, excitement to the football game and always adds uh, imagination and never afraid to take a chance. No roll aids in his dive kit. Second down 13. Nice move by Sean Jackson. Inside the 15 to the 14 yard line, Daryl McCorby making the stop for the Bengal Tigers. You know, and there's, there have been times when he's rolled the dice that uh, it really hasn't paid off. Uh, you know, people wonder about the going for two against Miami a couple years ago. And uh, then last last week against Auburn, taking a chance on fourth down that uh, might have backfired on him a little bit. But that's just his nature. That's what he's going to do, you know. And, uh, and, of course, he's had a bunch of them. If you got 200 victories, there's a bunch of those gambles that have turned out right. Got his son at uh, coaching at Sanford now, another son that's offensive coordinator at Sanford. Third down seven, Weldon. Leads it to Sean Jackson. Good move again. Down to about the six yard line. That's close to the first down for the Seminoles. Getting a good workout for this true freshman, number 37, from New Orleans. Jackson out here in the flat. Again, this is a deep drop. You see Leonard Harris working his way upfield on the pass rush. Weldon gets it out on time, and it just no matchup. Sean Jackson just is going to stop faster than David Walkup, and uh, and he takes it back to the inside and gets a first down. First and goal from the six-yard line. 12:40 to go in the ball game. Right up the middle, touchdown. Paul Moore. His second rushing touchdown of the year. Big hole right up the middle for the 245 pounder. Well, there's never a time that's tougher to play than when you know you're out of a football game and you're not on a team that is used to be out of being out of football games. But that time the FSU offensive line opened it up up the middle and Paul Moore took his 245 pounds in the pay dirt. Richie Andrews with a point after. It's 35 to 3. Florida State will be back. Bobby Bowden going for victory number 200 today. His coaching career started at Samford University back in 1959. There's the young Bobby Bowden. He doesn't look that much older today at the age of 60. Went from there to West Virginia where he started developing his reputation. That's where I remember first hearing about Bobby Bowden in the early 70s. Then came to Florida State in 1976 to try to rescue a program that was not going anywhere. The, the Florida State program, they'd had a couple of successful seasons, but it's relatively new in terms of intercollegiate football. It started in the 50s. He came here and put them on the map. Yes, sir. Of course, there were the Bill Peterson days back when Ronnie Seller was here and Fred Bolitnikoff and Barry Smith. In and out of the end zone for Richie Andrews' kick again. Punishes that thing. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. And LSU will see if they can get something going. Seven plays, 50 yards for the score for Florida State. Highlighted by Warren Hart's first reception of his career. Well, the Seminoles will be favored in the remaining football games against South Carolina, Cincinnati, Memphis State, and Florida. And should finish the season 9-2. and two. They ran into roadblocks at Miami and Auburn. Saul Graves driven out of bounds out here at the 25. Well, Mickey Andrews has to be happy with the way his defense is played. In the big plays that uh, took down LSU, but defensively, 
they have really silenced this offense here in the second half. Yeah, they've had a staff together for a long time here. Wally Burnham been here since 85. Jim Gladden, outside linebacker coach, has been here 15 years. On the second down five, some running room. That is Jermaine Williams. Driven out of bounds at the 39. Jermaine just a freshman. Game of 14. True freshman, and this is uh, Louisiana's all-time leading rusher in high school. Over 8,000 yards. Boom. Switches the ball, gets to the outside. Got a good hold of that thing and carries some knolls with him to the sideline. Out to the 39 where it's first down. Here's the reverse to Todd Kinchin. Now he's going to pull up and throw it. It is incomplete. To Marcus Carter should have been caught. Kitchen with a rifle shot when he pulled up over there, and Carter just dropped the ball. Look on the fan faces from LSU. Never a dull moment. Kitchen does a nice job of faking, pulling everybody up. Reagans realizes he has no other option but to commit. Good pass. Good coverage downfield. Errol McCorvey stayed right with it. Good throw, and uh, Marcus couldn't hang on. We'll try the draw up the middle and get three or four yards, not much more, to about the 38-yard line. Let's Your dogs coming into this football game. Uh, I, I didn't really understand that uh, at the time. And the turnovers and big plays have made it made that look like a good estimate, but uh, this can be a good LSU football team. Here comes Sean Jackson again. Cuts against the grain. Drives for the first down. Show you the strength of this 18-year-old. Uh, speaking of uh, what's coming up next for Florida State University, they go ahead and continue to win this game. You can see that they'll be favored in all the games coming up. South Carolina, Cincinnati, Memphis State. And Florida should be a tough one, but that's going to be here at Stoke Campbell. And LSU is going to have a tough one right off the shoot next week against Ole Miss, then at Alabama. Best Ole Miss team that we've seen in the last nine years. And, of course, Alabama seems to be on the rebound. On the sprint out, Weldon with the toss. It is complete. The number 81, Kevin Knox at the 32. That should be an... It'll depend on where they spot it. Could be enough for a first down. Gain of 10 yards. There's Knox. He's a freshman from Niceville, Florida. On that particular play, you saw what they like about Casey Weldon. He's mobile. He can go to his left. He can go to his right. Just a real good athlete. Brad Johnson, who had started previously, is, is also a good athlete, but at 6'6", six, six, is not quite as mobile. And that way, not in that play, Knox just worked himself free eventually. Weldon bought time getting outside and then popped it in there to Kevin. Just short of the first down. Second down inches. Hand off to Sean Jackson, running hard, almost broke that tackle. Inside the 30, David Walkup falls him down, the inside linebacker for LSU. 28 to 3, Florida State with five minutes to go, third quarter. Walkup. He's the only returning starter at linebacker. You know, he's for this defense, and uh, you know he's, he's a sophomore. He's a sophomore, so <laughs> you know. Uh, now, everybody else had uh, changed positions or changed alignments, gone from left to right corner or gone from nose to tackle, and uh, walk up was the only returning starter at linebacker. First down from the 29. Run Sean Jackson again. Sean Jackson with about eight yards. This is the most experience Sean Jackson has received this year for Florida State. I've been telling you, Bobby Bowden has been wanting to get him in the game. He says he keeps saying to himself, I'm going to use him this game. I'm going to use him this game. And then he says, we get in the Miami game and we have troubles. We have the Auburn game and it's so close. And today he said, I'm just going to force myself to get Sean Jackson some time. <laughs> and you know, you can't tell what Bobby Bowden's going to do. He doesn't know what he's going to do sometimes. So some coaches, they take different approaches to the game. Some coaches have the first 20 plays mapped out. And I'm not sure he's really decided which side of the field he's going to line up on, you know, before they before they hit the hit the turf. Second down two, play fake. Weldon with plenty of time has an open receiver. It is an incomplete at the 16-yard line. And Reggie Johnson is angry over the call. Let's go to Ron Thulin in Atlanta. 
Thank you very much, Bob Neal. It is a wild one at Bobby Dodge Stadium in Atlanta. Duke pulled within 24-21 of Georgia Tech, but on the ensuing kickoff, Kevin Tisdale of Georgia Tech, watch him, he bounces out to the outside. Nothing but daylight to pay dirt. 85 yards for the touchdown. That gives Georgia Tech a 31-21 lead over Duke, and they are in the third quarter. Bob? A lot closer ball game in Atlanta than most people expected that to be. You see Kevin Mancini, the right tackle, being helped off the field for Florida State. Let's watch the end of this last play. Reggie Johnson out there in the flat comes back for the football. Oh. A little, little uh, <laughs> incomplete. I think I heard it rattling around in there. <laughs> Me too. I'm but going with the official. But that's one. a plus for. What do you mean? He's in theater school. Right, yeah. On the third down two, they run it off the right side. Well, there's some power running by Sean Jackson. Amp Lee at six feet 195, and Sean Jackson at 66 two, 220 gives Bobby Bowden a little bit of change of pace there. Tailback. One more, a little bit more of a scat back type. You know, and there's no question about it, as football is involved. Uh, you know, you need depth because more and more schools are rolling people in and out of there, and uh, they can just wear you down. So you got a couple of running backs like that. Uh, I w I'd, I'd want them to be out of breath if I was on defense. Here's the handoff to the fullback, Paul Moore. Inside the 15, down to about the 13, and Florida State now just wearing out this LSU defensive team. They've been on the field for a lot of plays in this quarter. Well, you know, coaches, uh, I think, have a certain amount of empathy for each, uh, for each other, and Bobby knows that, uh, you know, he's, his team has played well, but they've, they've gotten some breaks, and, and uh, you know, he know that's, knows that, uh, that Archer's having an uncomfortable time, so 28-3, to three if he's not going to try to embarrass anybody. Chewing up clock, 2.57 to go in the third quarter. This is second down seven from the 13. Golden can't find anybody calling signals from the end zone it's picked off by LSU out to the eight yard line Weldon was directing traffic threw it into the end zone intended for Kevin Knox but Wayne Williams came and picked it off number 23 I'll tell you who he wanted originally. He wanted the tight end. And a great job by Ravel Rose Swan on the tight end. Stayed right with the tight end. You see, he couldn't find him. Now he gets outside of the pocket. Knox coming inside, but Wayne Williams all over him. Makes a move on the football and makes the interception. Probably not real sure where he is right now, but he sees green below him and he says, I better keep going. And we have a timeout on the field. We'll be back to Doak Campbell Stadium right after this. Picnic for Florida State leading 28 to 3. But speaking of picking, an interception by LSU, and they have the ball here out at the eight and a half yard line, trailing 28 3, 237 to go, third quarter. Now Saul Graves in for another series. He hands it to Harvey Williams, who broke a tackle or two and gets it to the 11 or 12 yard line. And Saul Graves is one of those. Uh, Fairy tale stories in a sense. You know, his dad played at LSU, White, and uh, I think he ran a, ran back an interception for 100 yards against Kentucky back in the, the earlier days, and still holds that record. And all Saul ever wanted to do is play quarterback for LSU, and stuck with it, and stuck with it, and stuck with it, and backed up, and backed up, and just had an opportunity to play a lot of football this year for him. Not much opportunity for LSU on that play. Once again, that defensive line for Florida State playing much better in this game than they have in recent games. Uh, Simpson, Cheney, Troy Sanders have all played very well today. Harvey Williams is up over 100 yards, or, or near 100 yards. He has 92 rushing for 22 carries. Old Bobby Bowden, I'm sure he talked to his son Tommy, who's the offensive coordinator at Kentucky, about this LSU defense. and. What to do against him. Graves throwing that tough out pattern. It is incomplete intended for Williams out there at about the 34 yard line. Tough pass to complete. He doesn't. And they'll turn it over to Florida State again. Well thrown ball and good coverage. You see Brad Scott in the sunglasses. Uh, 
replaced Wayne McDuffie. Folks at Florida State, of course, miss Wayne. He's with the Atlanta Falcons. But Brad Scott doing a fine job coordinating the offense here. FSU's going after this punt again. Ten men on the line. Buckley's out at the 50. No penalty marker goes down, even though Griffith did. Buckley catches it at the 50. Griffith wanted a flag, didn't get it, got off a 39-yard punt. FSU has it right at midfield. Looked like they hit him, but uh, remember, punters do throw a little bit of an act onto that. Didn't get the call from the official, and FSU takes over with, once again, outstanding field position. Minute 17 to go in the third quarter. Georgia Tech's added another touchdown now, stretching their lead. Ole Miss out in front of Vanderbilt. 17th-ranked Ole Miss will be the next opponent for LSU. We thought for a minute we were going. Going to get to eat oysters at Phil's Oyster Bar, but alas. <laughs> Joe put up the flag. Casey Weldon rifles it down the middle. What a great grab. That's Warren Hart, the red shirt freshman tight end. Sprinting down the middle, 32-yard grab, and Bobby Bowden just keeps reloading. Now, hold it. There is a penalty marker down as we watch this replay. That young man was wide open. Fine catch. What it was, Bob, they are playing a two-deep zone, and the, the, the fake held the linebackers, and there is nobody back in the deep middle of the field in that particular situation. Holding Florida State, that would have been Warren Hart's first career collegiate reception. And a good release by Warren Hart. Worked his way around Juan Sendoya, who's from Miami, Columbus High School. Well, spotted back here at the 40, where it's now first down 20, Florida State. Penalties continue to mount for Florida State. They once again are up in the near the 50 yards, the six for 44. About 100 last week. Wait to Dossie with a nice move after the catch. Dives out to the 47 yard line. Dossie's been uncharacteristically quiet today. They really haven't got the ball to him that much. LSU's plan seems to have shut him down. Only two catches of 13 against Miami. So that's a positive note for the LSU defense. They've been really spreading out the passing, though. Eight different Florida State players have caught passes today. This is second down 14. Weldon. Oh, he gets rid of it under pressure. It is complete all the way to the 33 yard line to Paul Moore, the fullback. 17 yard pass completion. The pressure from Mark Boutte, number 95. I think Morton might have got there too. Might have fought his way over there. Let's see. Well, looking downfield, nobody there at first. Boutte chasing him down, and here comes Scott Wharton. And uh, it didn't look like it there, but, I mean, he really unloaded on him. And just a tremendous play. Just displays the athletic ability of Casey Weldon. Ready for the fourth quarter now with Florida State leading by a score of 28 to 3. You get that kind of feeling in this kind of ball game that there's just not any way that LSU can come back. They have been unsuccessful in throwing the ball, and they're going to have to start trying to do that more. Yeah, and uh, this one is just best to be over. Yeah. For all of us. <laughs> 15 more minutes. Stay with us. We'll uh, have some entertaining stories for you, and you never know what Bobby Bowden will do. I'm sure we're going to see some more interesting plays from Florida State. And that's called truth in broadcasting. Ready for the final 15 minutes from Doak Campbell Stadium. Florida State. Nice play fake by Weldon. He completes it to Hart. He finally gets his first collegiate reception after having the other one nullified. Let's 
So Florida State coming off a two game losing streak is really taking it out on LSU here today even though the score is only 28 to 3. FSU is knocking at the door once again. Dossie split way out wide to the left side almost off the field and almost off the screen up there. They hand it to Sean Jackson. Let's see if he can avoid some tackles. No they get him in the backfield. Good penetration by this LSU defense on that particular play. Boutte is in there again. He's been very active today. A sack. And he's uh, had a lot of quarterback pressures. Bobby Bowden on his way to victory number 200 this afternoon here in Tallahassee. And there's never been one that wasn't interesting from some facet. You know, he always adds uh, excitement to the football game and always adds uh, imagination and never afraid to take a chance. No Rolades in his job kit. Second down 13. Nice move by Sean Jackson. Inside the 15 to the 14 yard line, Daryl McCorvey making the stop for the Bengal Tigers. You know, and there's, there have been times when he's rolled the dice that uh, it really hasn't paid off. Uh, you know, people wonder about the going for two against Miami a couple years ago. And uh, then last last week against Auburn, taking a chance on fourth down that uh, might have backfired on him a little bit. But that's just his nature. That's what he's going to do, you know. And, uh, and of course, he's had a bunch of them. If you got 200 victories, there's a bunch of those gambles that have turned out right. Got his son at uh, coaching at Sanford now. Another son that's offensive coordinator at Sanford. Third down seven, Weldon. Leads it to Sean Jackson. Move again. To about the six yard line. That's close to the first down for the Seminoles. Getting a good workout for this true freshman, number 37, from New Orleans. Jackson out here in the flat. Again, this is a deep drop. You see Leonard Harris working his way up field on the pass rush. Weldon gets it out on time and it just no matchup. Sean Jackson just is going to stop faster than David walk up and uh, and he takes it back to the inside and gets a first down. First and goal from the six yard line. 1240 to go in the ball game. Right up the middle touchdown. Paul Moore. His second rushing touchdown of the year. Big hole right up the middle for the 245 pounder. Well, there's never a time that's tougher to play than when you know you're out of a football game and you're not on a team that is used to be out of being out of football games. But that time, the FSU offensive line opened it up up the middle and. Paul Moore took his 245 pounds into pay dirt. Richie Andrews with a point after. It's 35 to 3. Florida State will be back. Bobby Bowden going for victory number 200 today. His coaching career started at Samford University back in 1959. There's the young Bobby Bowden. He doesn't look that much older today at the age of 60. Went from there to West Virginia where he started developing his reputation. That's where I remember first hearing about Bobby Bowden in the early 70s. And then came to Florida State in 1976 to try to rescue a program that was not going anywhere. The, the Florida State program, they'd, they'd had a couple of successful seasons, but it's relatively new in terms of intercollegiate football. It started in the 50s. He came here and put them on the map. Yes, sir. Of course, there were the Bill Peterson days back when Ronnie Seller was here and Fred Bolitnikoff and Larry Smith. In and out of the end zone for Richie Andrews' kick again. Punishes that thing. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. And LSU will see if they can get something going. Seven plays, 50 yards for the score for Florida State. Highlighted by Warren Hart's first reception of his career. Well, the Seminoles will be favored in the remaining football games against South Carolina, Cincinnati, Memphis State, and Florida. 
and should finish the season nine and two. But they ran into roadblocks at Miami and Auburn. Saul Graves driven out of bounds out here at the 25. Well, Mickey Andrews has to be happy with the way his defense is played. In the big plays that took down LSU, but defensively, they have really silenced this offense here in the second half. Yeah, they've had a staff together for a long time here. Wally Burnham been here since 85. Jim Gladden, outside linebacker coach, has been here 15 years. On the second down five, some running room. That is Jermaine Williams. Driven out of bounds at the 39. Jermaine, just a freshman. Gain of 14. True freshman, and this is uh, Louisiana's all-time leading rusher in high school. Over 8,000 yards. Boom. Switches the ball, gets to the outside. Got a good hold of that thing and carries some knolls with him to the sideline. Out to the 39 where it's first down. Here's the reverse to Todd Kinchin. Now he's going to pull up and throw it. It is incomplete to Marcus Carter should have been caught Kitchen with a rifle shot when he pulled up over there and Carter just dropped the ball look on the fan faces from LSU never a dull moment Kitchen does a nice job of faking pulling everybody up Reagan's realizes he has no other option but to commit good pass good coverage downfield Errol McCorvey stayed right with it good throw and uh, Marcus couldn't hang on we'll try the draw up the middle and get three or four yards not much more to about the 38 yard line let's go to Ron Thulin in Atlanta all right Bob Neal the Houston Cougars own the nation's longest division 1A win streak at 10 games apparently that will go to 11 because David Klingler hits a 27 yard touchdown pass to Patrick Cooper and right now Houston all over Arkansas by 17 and they're in the third quarter let's go back to Bob and Tim Houston with the nation's longest win streak Georgia Tech had been tied with that until they tied North Carolina last week you saw earlier on the scores Georgia Tech tacked on another touchdown in that game against Duke with a comfortable lead now Intended for Kenshin. He took a shot. Remember, he came into this game with sore ribs. Looks like he's all right. But watch him hold that arm down. And that was a hit there. Let's let's watch and listen as this play develops. Oh. See him holding that right arm down by his side. Three or four times Kenshin has been hit like that today. Fourth down six and the punt. Terrell Buckley is back at about his 18 yard line. Gonna have an opportunity to return it. <laughs> he thought he had an opportunity down hard at the 10 yard line. And we'll be back to Doak Campbell right after this. Team to go in the fourth quarter. Next week, Tim and I will be in Starkville, Mississippi. For another look at Gene Stallings, Alabama Crimson Tide taking on the Mississippi State Bulldogs next Saturday at 12.30 Eastern Time right here on TBS. Now Brad Johnson back in at quarterback and Chris Parker and Maurice Pinkney are in at running backs for FSU. And Johnson hands it off to 21 Maurice Pinkney. Big running room. Out to the 25-yard line. Number 21, Maurice. Rose Swan made the stop. Gain of 13 for Pinkney. He's a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Now's the time of the game when things get really interesting for our spotter, Kim Anderson. <laughs> he gets to use all the boards. All those little numbers now become important. <laughs> 140 players in this ball game today. First down 10 from the 25. It's a character building. Brad Johnson. Screens it out to the left. It goes incomplete off the hands of Pinkney. And that was Sean King warming his tracks there. And Sean's a true freshman. They feel like uh, it's going to be a great player for him in the years to come. A lot of young guys in this LSU defense show a lot of promise.
kind of a quiet crowd in Doak Campbell. It's kind of a stadium. reminds me of Saturday afternoon picnic here. It's more like a baseball kind of crowd. But FSU baseball stadium right across the way there. And of course they're they're not exactly biting their nails here at 35 to 3 this afternoon. The ball came loose down there. There's Dickhauser Stadium, the baseball field across uh -oh. the way. <laughs> Somebody just sailed an airplane <laughs> onto the field. It's a uh, Saturday afternoon festive attitude atmosphere here at Tallahassee. Third down, seven. Brad Johnson. Completes it over the middle of the pit for the first down out to the 43 yard line. Darrell McCorvey with the stop. Gain of 15 on that play. And let's go now to check in some more college football action this afternoon from Atlanta. All right, Bob, Georgia Tech, number 15 in the country, led Duke only 17-14 at the half, but the second half has been all the Yellow Jackets. How about quarterback Sean Jones? He runs that option, finds daylight for 20 yards, his second rushing touchdown of the day, and right now, Georgia Tech leading Duke by 21. Bob? First down 10 from the 43. Florida State running right up the middle with Pinckney. He gets about 12 yards. Reggie Walker with a stop for LSU. Pinckney, six feet tall, 200 pounds, is a sophomore. He had only two carries for 12 yards coming into this game today. Now he has two for 25 this time. On the first down, Brad Johnson. It off into the backfield this time to Chris Parker. And this is a time of the game when uh, the team that's got 35 puts in all their second team guys. And, uh, you know, they're fresh and they're anxious to prove something and they want to show what they got and they don't like being number two and they want to go after. <laughs> the guys that are the starters for the other team want it to be over. You know, they want to get ready for next week. But you got to play it out. Eight minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Pinkney finding some running room. To the 30-yard line goes Maurice Pinkney. A gain of 12. Let's take a look at this young man showing some good running ability. Straight ahead, Hewitt closes it to the inside, but you see the double team, they get some great movement. Reggie Johnson and the tackle working together get some great movement that create the scene. And they just kept, they got, they got alignment so deep downfield that it cut off the pursuit from the linebacker inside. Getting some playing time also for the freshman uh, Matt Fryer and sophomore Eric Terrell, the wide receivers. What a catch! That was Warren Hart. We found another good tight end, just what the FSU opponents need. <laughs> they had Dave Roberts, Reggie Johnson, and now here's Warren Hart. Tough catch. Really, I think you'll get a tomahawk for this one. He ran a little, uh, little check down, just kind of drifted to the outside and then cut back inside. Ooh. Didn't expect Walker to be there and uh, comes up with the football. Good concentration. I appreciate him showing it to us. It's second down and four. <laughs> We're going to run it to the left side to Chris Parker. Hit in the backfield and thrown for a loss. It was Vincent Fuller who got back there to hit him. The penalty marker goes down. A couple of them. Well, FSU next week is going to go play at South Carolina. The personal foul is against Florida State. And then host Cincinnati, then play at Memphis State, and then host Florida to close out the year and hopefully go to a New Year's Day bowl game. That's that's what Bobby Bowden is using in terms of motivating this team for the rest of this season. Dead ball, personal foul, Florida State. It'll be third down. Move it back to about the 41-yard line. Watch Vince Fuller come up there. Now, he was a freshman All-SEC last year and it got, I think, kind of inadvertently stepped over. Maybe it wasn't inadvertently. Whoops. Did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> and I never All touched right. it. Let's catch the offensive guy for once. <laughs> that makes your day. 
Third down. Four. Third down in about 21. 21 or 22, somewhere in that neighborhood. Brad Johnson with a lot of time to throw, then it closed, batted down by Reggie Walker. The way things are going today, I'm surprised that it wasn't batted into the hands of Warren Hart, who was just standing around there. <laughs> the way things have gone for LSU, it's been one of those days. Well, LSU will continue to be winless on the road. They've won at home and played well there, but have been unable to get anything happening when they've had to go on the road. We saw them lose to Vanderbilt 24-21. Lost in Florida 34 to 8. Beat Kentucky 30 to Now about to lose here again today. We're going to spot that down inside the five again. Another great job of punting by Scotty McLaren, a punt of 37 yards. Old Dwight Stones and Craig Masback will have the track and field year in review. And what a year it's been. So look at 1990's greatest performances at 10-15 tonight here on TBS. So I hope you'll join for that. Jesse Daigle in at quarterback for LSU. He's the man who is the third teamer who has been the holder on the kick snaps. Ran for the first down earlier in the game on the fake field goal. And he hands it off up the middle. Actually, actually, he and Chad Loop were, were competing for the third string job, and then Chris Mook broke his ankle before LSU played Georgia. And that, that elevated uh, Loop into the second spot, and Jesse now... Uh, Owns the third spot exclusively. And uh, Dad, it's on the five yard line. Do I have to go in here? Yes, nice timing. Second down, eight from the nine. And they hand that to 33 Odell Beckham. It was Beckham who got this game started, not to just lay the blame on that young man, but his kickoff return at the beginning of the game was fumbled at the 16-yard line, and Florida State took it right in for the score to get out in front 7-0. Well, it was only an omen of things that would follow. If the ball had a chance to bounce, th bounce the wrong way for LSU this afternoon, it did. And then FSU came up with the plays. They made the plays at the critical times. And they all resulted in touchdowns. Holding LSU replay second down. Holding. They'll spot this back half the distance and put it just inside the five yard line. Mike Archer's tough though. He has a tough attitude and he'll uh, he'll hang in there with his team. They'll fall to four and three when they return back to Baton Rouge to prepare for Ole Miss next week. You know, and that man right there has been through the battles too. He's been through the hard times, and uh, you know they haven't come often, but they have come, and he's weathered them and kept his perspective. And you just got to focus on the on what happens and make good things out of it. Daigle throwing on the run, batted down up at the 15 yard line. Intended for Todd Kinchin. Tommy Henry covering for oh, FSU. Oh, Let's check in with Atlanta once again. All right, Bob Neal, we go out to Boulder, Colorado, where number 22 Oklahoma taking on the Buffaloes of Colorado. 7 to 6, OU's on top. Freshman Cale Gundy from Midwest City, Oklahoma. His brother played for Oklahoma State. He hits Ted Long 80 yards for the touchdown. Colorado has not or has won their last 11 home games, but right now they trail the Oklahoma Sooners 14 to 6 in the second. Let's go back to Tallahassee. 35 to 3, Florida State. You get the LSU perspective on this game today. Jermaine Williams, the tailback behind Jesse Dagger. Starting at the four-yard line. Third down and 12. Dagle just barely got that thing loose because once again, Bill Reagans was coming hard from the outside. Reagans and Crothers coming around the outside. Crothers has had a whale of a game when this game was still in doubt somewhat. There's the noise meter. It had gotten up pretty high at some point today, but basically this crowd could, could see that it was not going to be one of those close ball games. I think that was a fake reading on the meter. <laughs> I'd like to challenge that reading on that meter. <laughs> I think somebody's fiddling with that thing. Griffin has the punt, standing right near the end line. Almost got that one. One of them was blocked earlier today. Buckley with what kind of move was that? He tried to go airborne. 32 yard line, he goes out of bounds. 34 yard punt, eight yard return, shades of neon, neon. We'll be back in a moment. 
Capitol in Florida here in Tallahassee where the Florida State Seminoles have a 35 to 3 lead with 538 to go in the ball game. Speaking of Capitals, I was looking for a friend of mine, Doug Moreau. He broadcasts for the LSU radio and uh, he ain't here. And what he's doing actually is he's running for a uh, district attorney down there in East Baton Rouge Perry. Good luck, Doug. Miss you here. He used to teach me how to talk like a Cajun. I don't want to hear some of that. <laughs> there are a couple of thousand of LSU fans made the trek over across the panhandle to this ball game. It'll be a lot longer drive back. And the new quarterback is Kenny Felder for Florida State, number five. They fake the reverse. Sean Jackson is all down hard by from behind. They just grabbed him right around the throat and hauled him down. That was 62 Stanley Thomas, the backup nose guard, who made the play. Times like this, you just hurt, hope that nobody gets hurt and everybody gets home safely. And check the other scores. Yeah. <laughs> Michigan State really handing it to your <coughs> alma mater. 41 to 18. <coughs> Oh, I forgot the switch. I have to start talking to you about the coaching, <laughs> the coach up there at uh, Purdue. What do you think? Here's the handoff to the tailback Felix Harris. He lost the ball, but it was after he was down. It will remain in possession of Florida State. Twenty-four years of weathering the battle there, Bobby Bowden. Twenty-four years of perspective. I'm sure he looks across the field at Mike Archer and say, don't, don't let it get you down, big guy. Well, I know how you feel. I've been there, too, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Third down ten from the 31. Here comes Harry. The sophomore from Lake Placid, Florida, 31 yards, his first touchdown. Showing you some speed, he's the fourth team tailback. And, and wait till you see this block by, I don't know what team it is, but the uh, Lonnie Johnson is a tight end. I mean, I have three on my list here and he isn't on it, so I guess he's the fourth team tight end. Open the door. Richie Andrews with a point after. Florida State increases the lead with three minutes 58 seconds remaining in this ball game. So they use Amp Lee, Sean Jackson, Chris Parker, and now Felix Harris. And Felix Harris gets a 31-yard touchdown run around the right side and anytime Florida State's needed it they've gone to the right side today and it's been very productive. See this uh, we'll see it again from another angle. Jason Dillaberry out there in front also and hustling to try to get there. You see the tight end. Well no you can't. But anyway Lonnie Johnson number 85 just locked up the outside linebacker and then turn the corner and a good job of hustling downfield by Florida State and a first touchdown a memorable day in the scrapbook Felix Harris looks like he was limping a little bit as he got that one into the end zone Find a little bit of a pitch in his case Richie Andrews has nailed a couple from the back of the end zone to kick off for Florida State with 358 remaining in the ball game. Talented kicker. This is much hang time as a punt. Slip Watkins right up the middle. He's got room. Remember, he's the world class sprinter. They got an angle on him, however, and he's driven out of bounds at the 31 and a half yard line. It was Terrell Buckley who came over and got him. He's got some world-class speed of his own, but not until Watkins got 69 yards on that kickoff return. Lefish well, just relaxed on that one, and he took it right up the middle. And they did go to work here. 
you know, at times like this, you substitute on the special teams. You put guys in there maybe that hadn't uh, had much playing time. Buckley is there and runs him out of bounds. And somebody came and got slipped before the, those two guys went after each other. At the 32-yard line, first down LSU. Jesse Dangle, the quarterback now. He fumbles it at the 33. LSU maintains possession. Derek Pope. Balls on it about the 33. That's him getting up 38. By the way, if LSU continues to lose by this wide a margin, the last time they lost this big was back in November of 81 versus Tulane, where they lost 48 to 7. I can guarantee, I don't think, I'm trying to remember back now. Mike Archer was with Howard Schnellenberger at the University of Miami as a coach. and. Uh, and then with uh, Orange Barber LSU, I, I don't know if he's ever been beaten this bad as, uh, in terms of being a coach, being on, on staff. If one of these games gets away from you like this, there's no telling Dead what happen. Ball, ball start, LSU still second down. And he's not worried. You know, he hates to see that spread, obviously, but he's not. he wants to get some people some experience. He wants to get out of here without getting anybody hurt so they can go back and Get ready for Ole Miss. You now, see, he's got to put this football team together. That's going to be his job. Uh, going to rebuild their confidence and help them to forget that he may just throw this film out because they did play solid football in the first half and were just uh, knifed by a couple of big plays and a couple of big turnovers. Dangle on second down, 16, looking for Watkins deep. Good coverage, number 41, Tommy Henry. I, I just was reminded that uh, Miami did come into Baton Rouge and beat uh, LSU pretty badly, 44 to three, back in '88. So you got a better memory so than me. Memory. I'm getting older now, you know. Hal Kalima's <laughs> memory is my memory. Good way to go, Hal. <laughs> it's always good to bring an extra memory with you. Right. Yeah. They'll spot that back here at the 38-yard line. It'll be third down, 16, with 2:48 to go in the ball game. Beckham and he's driven down at the 34 yard line by John Davis. Unless your cheerleaders still managing to smile through it all trailing 42 to 3. Their job. <laughs> That's a good point. They're maintaining their responsibility. <laughs> Always cheerful. A lot of the fans here at Doak Campbell Stadium are making their ways to the exit here after watching their favorite team win 42 to 3. They're going to expand this stadium. I'm going to add some seats as early as next year. I'm going to get it up to about 75,000 people by about 1994. It's a way to increase the revenue. Jesse Daigle calls timeout. Jesse, don't prolong this. Dead ball, delay of game, LSU still fourth down. He didn't quite get the timeout call. They'll call the delay of game and move it back here to the 39. Folks saying hello to some relatives back in Baton Rouge watching this afternoon. I'm sure the Baton Rouge folks will be all coaching the LSU Tigers <laughs> all week long now, which is the prerogative of the fan, of course. Exactly. 17. Lobbing it up for Slip Watkins. It's picked off. That's John Davis. Back out to the 26-yard line. Slip Watkins was the intended receiver. So John Davis with the interception. A minute 29 to go. 200th career coaching victory this afternoon. The 60-year-old head coach of Florida State University. There was a clipping call on the interception return, thus the ball was moved back here to the eight-yard line. Here comes Pinkney again. Drives it out to the 28. 
Gain of 15 yards. Clock continues to run as soon as they move the sticks up here. And the first down set. Now the clock starts running again. Yeah, I think any young coach ought to study that man's uh, philosophy and they ought to study his career and how it's advanced and uh, you know how he's dealt with both success and disappointment. He seems to have kept it all in good perspective. There's a bevy of grandchildren and sons that are pursuing the coaching career. Felder rifles it over here and it's picked off by LSU to the 29 yard line. With the ball, number eight, Carlton Buckels. A turn of 12. Good release, though. <laughs> yes. Got some snap on that ball. And he felt or threw it to the wrong jersey that time. And 45 seconds remaining in this ball game for Bobby Bowden. He's about to get 200. It was hard coming. He hadn't had a victory in October. His last victory with Seminoles came in September. Then the loss came to Miami, followed by the loss to Auburn. And a week off in between there. LSU has been unable to score a touchdown today. That was Tyke Tolbert making the reception, number 84. 42 to 3, so I'm sure they'd like to try to get it in the end zone, even though there's only 38 seconds remaining in this ballgame. So now, Bobby, what are you going to do for us next? So you won 200. I don't think he's through <laughs> yet. He doesn't. Ha, ha, does it seem to you like his joy for the game has diminished? Uh, he still talks with enthusiasm, and I think he's still, obviously, he's. Uh, pressure has now left his life. I mean, he's not. <laughs> what can they do? Fire me. <laughs> <laughs> Lifetime contract here at Florida State. Under pressure. Intended for Slip Watkins. And coming over to break it up was Bill Reagans. Kirk Carruthers in there to get all over Jesse Daigle when he released that ball. No, my, my feeling with Bobby is that, uh, if anything, he can be more effective as a coach now with some of the pressure uh, to perform off because he has performed so well over the years as the head coach here and I think he enjoys it more in that sense and maybe even a more effective coach today. I think so too. You know there you see Ray Smoot uh, being helped off the field there. And Ray's a tackle for LSU and. Uh, played a little guard. Because of the injury to Chris Truax. You know some about this Florida I mean uh, LSU offense against Florida. They found themselves at times on the field with only two guys on their offense that finished the spring with them at the same position. So I mean it's it's been injuries and it's been tough. Trying to go to Beckham down at the five. It's incomplete with 27 seconds left. And it'll be fourth down. Well, we'll go see what uh, Alabama looks like. Alabama's playing Penn State today. We'll be televising Alabama at Mississippi State next week. I was myself shocked by the Alabama upset at Knoxville. You know the, oh, yeah. They've beaten Tennessee. Though. Great effort, huh? Tennessee in the last several years has only have only like three losses, four losses. They're all to Alabama. Uh, four losses in the uh, at home in Knoxville. Andy Martin jumped offside. Andy Martin twitched a little bit, but he's been a he's been a real tooth and nail for him. Ball start, LSU, still fourth down. He went 60 minutes with Huey Richardson last uh, went against Florida, and Huey didn't come out of there with a sack. You know they ought to give a, an award to Julia Ann Bowden too. You know I mean you ought to give an award to the wife of a coach who wins 200 games, putting up with this. Stuff. Daigle completes it over the middle to Beckham. And Beckham to the 18 yard line. Clock down to 19 seconds. Carruthers with his 12th tackle of the day. What game he's had. Carruthers a little slow getting up down there, too. We see a cooler of uh, liquid down there on the sideline. Bobby Bowden's 200th win coming up. Is that ice in there? That could be cold. Bobby, look behind you. I don't want to be the guy to try that. Everybody seems to be okay. As 
to get up from the field. We have 18 clicks of the clock remaining here. And it's 42 to 3. Somebody else that deserves some recognition, Lieutenant Billy Smith. Now, he's a police officer standing next to Bowden there. He's the one that protects him through all these trials and tribulations. And those guys have spent, you know, a lot of afternoons together. It's the guy that walks with him. We'll have to get through him before the water on Bowden, I guess. We'll watch that carefully here. This is here the final ticks of this game. They go running for his life. This one's now there's a flag goes down and Carruthers gets into it and they've doused him and now we've got a big brawl out on the field marring what would have been the 200th victory for what is for Bobby Bowden and look at this that's an ugly mess down there. This is ugly. It all happened on that final tackle when they ran out of bounds on the sideline. Looks like they're starting to get it cleared up down there, although there's still some bodies flying around. They better get them pulled away from each other. The ball game is over. Archer trying to get his players to leave, as is Bobby Bowden. And that's terrible that his 200th victory has to end with the ball. And the fans don't like it either. I have a feeling they're booing both these teams. Didn't need that to break out here. It was one of those unfortunate incidences where Daigle was running down the sideline as he was at the sideline. He was hit, knocked out of bounds. Carruthers was over there. And of course, Carruthers then ended up in the middle of the LSU bench. Somebody on the bench got into Carruthers and vice versa. And the next thing you know, we had the near brawl. It looks like everybody came out of it okay. And I think they've got it all straightened out in the field. Now they might be about to enjoy his 200 career coaching victory. I'm sorry about that. Congratulations. Congratulations on your 200th win. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.